H2A Live, Shaw Sports Presentation. much for tuning in tonight. We're great to be back here with Champ Promotions after the pandemic and a long layoff of boxing to the fans of Victoria. We're here with Shaw TV and the wonderful Champ Promotions. And we've got a great night of amateur boxing to bring into the city at the Roadhouse and the Roundhouse. And we're here with, the main event's gonna be Tara Smith. Uh, she's, won, she's fought five times in 28 days. She's looking to go to the Olympics, fighting in Britain next week. And she just beat the national champion last week. So we're looking forward to seeing her fight. And I'm so happy to be here with Tristan Conley, two-time double bonus winner from the Ultimate Fighting Championship. As, yeah, Tristan, it's great to have you, brother. Yeah, great to be back here in Victoria, back uh, back here in Esquimalt at the uh, the Roundhouse. It's crazy. Like, I, I grew up skateboarding across the street and uh, to see what the... Uh, Champ Promotions has turned this place into right after the pandemic. It is packed. It looks awesome. I'm excited to watch some awesome fights tonight. And uh, can't wait to get the uh, party started. So we'll hand it off now to uh, the DJ and get the, the first fights ready to go here. Any minute. We've got uh, Comet Tang from Island of Boxing in Victoria against Cody Lamb from the Hidden City Boxing Club. Just waiting for them to walk out as we get this night started. It's gonna be amazing. I can feel the electricity in the audience. I'm joined by my homie here, Tristan Conley from the Ultimate Fighting Championship. And we're just ready to get started and bring this thing back to Victoria. Yeah, this, uh, this venue is absolutely packed uh, and super excited to be here. Uh, just walking the front, we have the first fighter walking out here. This must be Comet Tang from Island Boxing in the blue corner. Looking fired up and ready to go. Making his lap of the ring. Here we go, Comet Tang. You guys are coming out, we're looking forward to seeing this fight. Comet Tang's Actually, oh, no, this, is, uh, this is Cody Lamb. Three and one. This we got Cody, Cody Lamb coming out Cody here. Lamb. Yeah. From Hidden Boxing City, City Hidden Boxing Club yeah. in Vancouver. A very tenacious, tough fighter that likes yeah. to come out on the inside and bang it out. He's always ready for a war. He's a new guy in the sport, but uh, he's willing to impress, and that's why he's out here tonight. And his coach is looking forward to seeing him compete. First fight in the card, you know, everyone's hungry to see a good fight, so it's a good spot to be. They need the whole rest of the card to sit back and watch and, and celebrate a good victory. So, Cody Lamb, excited to see what he's gonna show tonight. And here is his opponent, 
Comet Tang coming in from Island Boxing in the red corner. He is looking fired up as well, and he does not want, he's from Island Boxing, this is his stomping ground. He does not want to let his family and friends down. He's looking to put on a show, I can tell. He, Good evening, fight go. fans. Tonight, we come to you live from the Roundhouse here at Bayview Place as Champ Promotions is proud to bring you a night of fantastic boxing action. It's been a long wait, fight fans, but we are proud to say boxing is back in Victoria. Welcome to Back on Track. All our fights tonight are regulated by the BC Athletic Commissioner's Office, represented ringside this evening by Robert Hanna. And just before we start, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the unceded territory of the Coast Salish people, and in particular, the Lekwanen people of the Songhee and Esquimalt nations. Now let's get to our first fight of the evening. Three two-minute rounds in our novice 60-kilogram division. This fight sponsored by the Height Foundation. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim, representing Hidden City Boxing Club in Vancouver, BC. Please welcome Cody Lamb. Is it his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red shorts with white trim, representing Island Boxing here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Comet Tang. Your referee in charge of the action is Mr. Richard Nishan. City is really looking forward to see Comet Tang in the ring, trains out of Island Boxing under Jason Height. He's got Troy in his corner, a uh, former national team member. Yeah, Comet's all, he just got his degree in chemistry from the University of Victoria. He's three and zero with one exhibition. Wow. And so he's looking really nice guy. He'd like to say hi to his parents back in Hong Cody! Kong. Go, and Cody! he's a long way away from home, but he feels like he's around family and he's working hard to get to this point. He's gonna, he's gonna bring the pressure. We're gonna look right. forward to this just Awesome, can't wait, here we go, first fight. Both fighters looking coming out in the orthodox stance. And Comet right in his face, standing tall. Nice right hand from Comet, but a good clinch from Cody. Nice tie up there. Comet coming in, looking to land that jab right away. Oh, little dirty boxing in the clinch here from both fighters. Good frame from Comet. Yeah, I think Tristan Comet likes to, he usually likes to step back and feel his opponent come in. Maybe he likes to use the Floyd Mayweather check hook and then drop that right hand up the oh, middle. But nice overhand there. He seems to be going to war. Comet. Jab, jab, jab. Let's go. Back Cody's stick. doing a good job of, oh, missed that jab. But he's going to get a tying, tying Comet up when he steps in. Nice two to the body there from Cody. Yes, nice. Both fighters landing there on the inside. I like how Comet is really light on his feet, hopping back and forth. Cody, look, he's a little bit planted, which is making it a little more predictable and making him making him land second. Good job tying up there, but good shot on the break from Comet. Well put, Tristan. You know, uh, Cody seems a little bit flat-footed, whereas Comet's using lateral movement and footwork and he's changing angles on his punches. So, you know, it's going to be a close decision because it's kind of a war, but Comet seems to be getting the advantage with what you said before, his footwork and movement. So Cody's pressure is starting to build on him. I can tell he's starting to get his, find his rhythm, find his range, and he's the one sort of stepping forward. But Comet's now started that, that the, 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 the Tide turns quickly in these things as I speak because Common is now being the one starting to come forward with pressure. Good clinch here. See some dirty boxing on the break. No. Come on, get him. Go, Cody. Go forward. There's the end of the first round. Good action pass first round. Both Excellent fighters round. really showing that they want to be here. You know, they both want to win it. They can tell they both had moments that round. Uh, Comet was moving around really nicely, staying light on his feet. Here we go. Let's have a look. Oh, good hook on the inside from Comet. Oh, a nice overhand on the break there. That was beautiful work from Comet. 
A lot of clinch work here in yeah, the Yeah, a lot rounds. of clinch runs. Good. There's that overhand. Touches him in. Body shot. Well, See, Coleman starts off with that jab. He tries to land it. Does. And then he's going to counter that with the right hand and move laterally off that if he wants to be effective. But Lamb's game is to get in close, tie you up, and brawl on the inside. So it's a battle of styles here. Yeah, absolutely. And we're moving into round two. Can't wait to see some more action. Go, go, you get to work. Tom can't wait to get right in Lamb's face. Out oh, being sent to neutral corners. Let's go. Let's go, you That's it, guys. That's it, Cody. Oh, oh, nice jab there from Comet. Oh, good. He's cha Comet's chasing a bit here. He needs to cut him off as he runs away so he can't can't exit out. And Heat makes him block him. He's punching him. Oh, good. Good exchange on the inside, both fighters. Two fighters with Oh, beautiful combination from Comet. Good frame. Making Cody work on those clinches. The clinches is timing those punches, those punches well to tie up. Oh, nice shot to the ball. Oh, beautiful right hand by yeah. Comet as he slipped on an angle, and that might have hurt Lamb a little bit. Did Comet's finishing the combos better? He's coming out. They're both coming with great exchanges. Then Comet's throwing the last punches on the breaks, and he's let those are ending up being the. Oh, as I say that, Cody comes with a nice overhand left, right out of the break there. Ooh, Ooh, big nice. hook. Right, left yeah. hook by Comet. It didn't land flush, but it was the first punch we've seen with range in this fight because it's been such a close quarter of battle between these two right? It has, yeah, no, it was a nice lunging hook. Shows the power that he's capable of throwing out. Oh, Cody's coming in with some nice jabs now, starting to find his range. The energy's slowing down, coming more to Lamb's speed. Comet's coming with big blitzes and big combos. Oh, here he got, he's coming back forward again. Starting to slow down, starting to find that hop in the stance again. And now Cody's starting to find his, his light foot hop. Oh, good turnaround. Oh, he's got the centers. A little bit heavy at this point. They've been going to war for the first two rounds here, so yeah, absolutely. they're gonna have to maintain and execute their best performance in this third round. Of course, man, and there you know, they are swinging. You know, it is it is tiring in there. Like when you haven't been in there, you don't understand how much how you're tired before the first round starts. I mean, every single one of those punches takes so much effort. So, you know, kudos to both these guys getting in there and showing what they're what they've got. Here we go. With some more highlights coming in. Oh, beautiful oh, left beautiful. hand by Comet. Yeah, left flush. Oh, beautiful left hand. Him. Nice right hand. Another straight. Straight left out of that. Oh, beautiful left on the break from Lamb. That was right underneath the guard. Here we go. This is a close fight, guys. Both guys have had great moments in both rounds. And it's really going to come down to who wants it more in this third round. Third and final round. Let's go, Keith. Comet right, coming out right in his face. Keeping that hop. Nobody doesn't care. He's getting right in there. Warning for keeping the head up. Lamb's getting fed to the body here, starting to lead with his head a little bit, and that's what the ref is uh, giving him a hard time for, keeping that head up. Oh, big overhand, landing on the shoulder there. Oh, nice. Beautiful left hand there by Cody Lamb, Tristan. He came in with a hook. Absolutely, yes. Thomas, this is a war. These are going to war tonight, right? I'll tell you that much. Nice, nice hook from Comet. Beautiful left hand by Comet, Tristan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, both, both of them right there. Out. That's Jason Hyde's style, and, and I've watched him try to teach his students there. we got Peter Lopez in the corner. He threw that left hand and moved out nice laterally, and it might have opened up a little blood in Cody's nose. Yeah, that was, this is a great final round. Both guys are really not wanting to concede up ground here, and it's turning into a really bad bell of wheels in the, in the pocket here. Oh, nice four. Um, Beautiful shot from the body. Yeah. My comedy drove in here. Uh, oh. The headgear is starting to spin around. 
gonna get that all fixed up so that we our fighters can see here for the the final seconds of the the war here. Here we go. And we notice the bloody nose from Cody Lamb here. Uh, I think Cody, oh no, straight back to that nose with a check hook by Cobb. And that's what he's really good at, checking that hook. Fake, fainting the right hand and then coming back to the hook full. And, and, and he did it there. Comets line some good shots to bind him. Oh, and a nice two on the break. He's really blood, bloody the nose up of Cody here in the first, third and final round. What a fight. That was a really exciting first fight at night. Those guys just, both these guys just really wanted. They both showed how tough they are. And uh, we're gonna head it off to the judges and see what they think. So they're the ones that really matter at the end of the day. Check out some of the highlights here from the action. Oh, nice overhand, and then a three followed up by Comet. There was a right hand Tristan that opened up the bloody oh, nose. Oh, was it? Lead. Right hand caught him there. Nice work inside the clinch. Just shows the war of attrition. Both guys really wanting it. Comet coming forward with that heavy pressure inside the clinch, working the body. Pushing Cody back. Two very Certainly durable seemed to fighters. Be, yeah, system. very durable. Seemed like Comet was the fresher fighter here at the end of the fight. Yeah, I think he's going to have a, a squeak in the decision edge, but we'll see what the judges think. We've got some great hey, we, qualified judges tonight. Yeah, that's not my job tonight. I'm not. Uh, I'm, I do not feel guilty for for not having their job. Here we go. Off to Don Andrews. We go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this the same for your winner by unanimous decision. In the red corner, Comet Tang! Great performance by both fighters. You know, Comet oh, yeah. came up big in the end and, and seemed to be able to move laterally. When it was a brawl, he'd move laterally and he landed the counter punches off of angle changes that I thought would have won on the fight. What did you think, Tristan? Absolutely, yeah. He, uh, I thought that he won every single round. Uh, thought that it was a huge, a, it was a very close fight at the same time, but he sort of was the one that was able to move more when he needed to, and when the pressure did come, uh, he was able to one to push Cody back with more pressure and was busier and landing the bigger shots where Cody was looking more to try and tie up as a defensive measure rather than an offensive measure. So. You know, hats off to Comet. What a great fight to start the night, and I can't wait to see the next one. Next fight we have, we have Sabrina Simmons versus Athena Jones. Both uh, these looking girls, forward yeah. to seeing Athena Jones fight, Tristan. She's been training with the, the main event, Tara Smith. She's three and three, according to my schedule, but I guess she's five and two, including exhibitions. She's a gardener landscaper, but she's tough as nails. Like, she throws combos. She's very modest, but she comes in throwing hard. So if you want a firefight, uh, she's going to give you one. So I'm excited to see her compete tonight. Awesome. Well, Chris, she comes from a, a, a very well-known gym in Griffin's boxing. Uh, so Sabrina Simmons, I, I, I'm sure she's up to the test to bring a, a hell of a fight tonight. So let's watch these ladies get them ready here, walking out and ready to throw down. Like I said, Athena is a humble warrior, very confident, nice person. But when you see her spar, uh, it's a different ball game. She's coming out swinging, and uh, she's ready to step on the inside. And like she's she's training with, you know, a, a runner-up national champion and someone that is going to Paris and England in the next couple of weeks. So she's wow. on her game. And she told me personally, Tristan, that she, you know, everything that uh, any mistake she makes, she pays for. You know, she, any openings that are there, Terrace is gonna hit it. So it just makes her better and a better fighter because she's used to seeing that coming in at all times. Yeah. Well, we're gonna see a, a good firefight here, I think. And uh, just can't wait to see these girls throw down. Ladies are on deck now, getting ready to walk out. About to be our second night of fights here at Champ Promotions here in Victoria, BC. It sure feels good to be back in front of live fights here. What an awesome venue. I, I you know, really can't beat, you know, hats off to what a great job promotion has done. Jason Height and everyone 
All right, setting up an awesome event. Like this is, it's so, it's so, so intimate, yet there, you can get a good number of people in here and it is packed. Like they're, uh, they, this has to be sold out. I want, can't wait to see what the, uh, what the gate is after. We're gonna pass this on to the man, Don Andrews. Thankful to have him in the house tonight. Yeah. We're still waiting out for the walk. They're back in the dressing room getting ready. These, these ladies are, you know, they're coming out. We're gonna be very prepared for this fight. I know I've, I've seen them training. Here comes Sabrina right now, Tristan. Here we go. Sabrina Simmons in the ring. The first fighter is ready. And here comes Athena. Ready to take a stand. Here she comes, the mastermind, Athena Jones. We've been looking forward to hearing and seeing her compete tonight. Like I said, she's a landscaper by trade, so she's up at 5 a.m. in the morning digging trenches. Just getting trenches. work done, so yeah, that's a tough to job. You know, I know landscapers, and I've done, you know, a fair, <laughs> fair amount of every job. You know, I'm sorry, I don't want to say every job, but a lot of uh, those labor jobs, and man, they, they make you tough, they make you strong. Here we go, we'll send it off to Don Andrews for the introduction. Andrews. Another three two-minute rounds in our novice 60 kilogram division. This fight sponsored by Lactigo. Introducing first to my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim, representing Giffen's, Griffin's rather boxing in Vancouver, BC. Please welcome Sabrina Simmons. Across the ring, her opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks with white trim, representing island boxing here in Victoria, British Columbia. Please welcome Athena Jones. Your referee in charge at the bell is Robert Hanna. Go. Oh, looking Fight forward to this competition. Two. Both humble athletes and very respectful, so they're gonna bang it out in the middle of the ring, but they both have a lot of respect for each other. Visiting Athena earlier this week, and she's just happy to be in here. There we go, both fighters in the orthodox stance. Beautiful jab from Athena right out of the gate. Nice right hand. Samantha's doing a good job of cutting off the ring, though, looking for those body shots. Beautiful lateral movement by Athena here. She's moving left to right very, very nicely and, and landing that job and yeah. another hook to the body. Yeah, nice. And she's that jab to keep her at bay. She cuts the corner. Oh, beautiful body work from Sabrina, though. Look, she's, she's doing a good job of trying to stay on her, not chase her. Oh, big hooks. Big hook from Sabrina. Big. Good pressure. But, oh. Beautiful right hand. Yeah, by right Athena. hand Athena comes with a nice right hand right through the middle. She's doing a good job being evasive and defensive. Keep moving. She's keeping on on her. Keeping on her bicycle. Keep moving. Keeping Sabrina working. It's a big punch Sabrina's throwing. You know, they are effective. She's doing a great job with it. It's a lot of volume. It's a lot of effort she's throwing. Oh, big combo again for Sabrina. Looking really good with the, the overhand body shot. Yeah, there's oh. a right, nice right hand landing there, Tristan. Nice, oh, yeah. Sabrina. Nice and right hand, good. Oh, big, oh, big swing and a four. Nice follow up the jab to the body. Tristan, I, I think Athena needs to keep moving laterally. That seems when she's the most effective, because Sabrina steps in and throws these hooks and those beautiful body shots like you mentioned earlier. She's doing a good job of moving, creating space for herself, though. As much as the, uh, both girls are doing a great job, Sabrina's doing a great job of cutting off the angles, but Athena is really doing a good job, good job of not getting caught in the ropes. But this is what Athena needs to avoid, is these big exchanges of brawls. Sabrina is landing hook after hook. And she is, for Sabrina, this is what she wants. She wants to just keep coming and keeping this pressure, keeping Athena running, because it also is exhausting running away, throwing punches, moving backwards. What a first round. These girls are coming to 
to get the guys a run for money, I can tell it's you. It's a they, tough round to score, Tristan. Really I mean, tough round. Athena moved really well naturally, but uh, Sabrina seemed to land the heavier shots on the inside, so you just have to lift, lift, lift up the judges. I think you might have thought Sabrina might have had a better round when it came to power and, and landing better Yeah, punches. both fighters had their, uh, were, were working their game plan. Both were having success in their moment. Moments. Let's have a look at the highlights here. Oh, nice. Nice, too, with a little double touch jab and a lead hook from Athena. Look at her moving around, landing her shots, moving. Like, that's great, great work from Athena. But here we see Sabrina coming in with those big hooks, clinching up, working the body, and giving no room for Athena to breathe. See, like, both both women are, are, are showing that they, they want it and they want to they want to win. They see her, Tristan, like, Athena seemed to be moving really well laterally, and then when mm -hmm. she'd stop, Sabrina would come in and throw those shovel hooks to the body exactly. and an uppercut. So, so whoever can keep their game plan working is gonna win this fight. That was a really good post round, and I can't wait to see round two. Here we go. Oh, both girls looking, oh, good clinch. Nothing much landing, both of them swinging in air right now. A wild right hand by Athena, yeah. then you notice Tristan that didn't land. Yeah, neither both girls are are really trying for big shots, but no, no, no one, none are having a lot of success landing here. A couple good jabs to the body from both women. Nice right hook oh, there, yeah. buddy. Oh, Athena, yeah, really nice right hook, yeah. and there's some good body shots from Sabrina. Athena's, oh, nice turn off from Athena. That was beautiful very footwork. Nice, very nice. Yes, beautiful, yeah, beautiful cutting the corner and cut, moving back off into space. Again, she's really starting to find her angles and cutting off and making and making uh, Sabrina work a lot harder than she needs to. This Athena is gonna make Sabrina tired. It's here, Tristan. She's just, uh, uh, Sabrina seems to be chasing her now. She as does, she, she is. Laterally in counters, she seems to get more tired. For, in round one, she was cutting her off and now she is chasing her and, uh, you know, a comp, uh, hats off to Athena because she's also doing a better job of pivoting off, but now she's starting to stand her ground uh, and, and throw down because she sees the fatigue coming to Sabrina. But Sabrina's, she's, you know, this is what she needs, a quick little breather, and she's going to be back in there. She's a little pit bull. She's coming with that forward pressure. She's just falling in with punches. So, oh, nice overhand and a hook. Good jab from Ooh. Sabrina. And good, oh, good, oh, nice uppercut on the inside from Athena. Good. Now the war here. It's hard to These ladies are really going. Athena's condition, she just took the right fresh one. Yeah. Athena, she moved laterally yeah. off the right hand. Yeah, just beautiful. See, that, this is what uh, this is what is good for Sabrina, these these brawling exchanges. Oh, just to, now the round's down. Yeah, these brawling exchanges, even though Athena's having success, Sabrina's also having success. And, uh, you know, you're flipping a coin there at that point. And in the first round, Sabrina's having more success with them. So, you know, she needs to keep on that, uh, keep creating those angles okay. and uh, landing those shots as she does. So, so here we go. The highlights here. We got oh, Sabrina beautiful. coming in. Big with hooks. Right hand. Nice and then clinch. another right hand, but Athena's trying to, and another oh, jab. Here so, we go. Uh, Both Athena's girls winning, landing Sabrina's here. Sabrina's winning the inside battle. And Athena's winning the outside battle. So, here, oh, yeah, I would boom, give it a round of peace. This, yeah, this round, I'd say definitely, definitely lean towards Athena's favor in this round. She also looked fresher towards the end of the round. Again, these brawls are where they're both landing. She needs to use her length, use her range, and, and use those angles. She's cutting beautifully in the first round. And Sabrina needs to go back to cutting off the ring like she was in round run and not allowing her to run away like she was. Yeah, and land those big shots like that. I 100% agree with uh, Tristan. Uh, Athena's got to start moving laterally and using her natural good footwork. And Sabrina wants a war. She's definitely the inside, and she's winning those clinch, uppercut, hook battles to the body. So Athena's yeah. got to move laterally and keep like that, you know? Yeah. She's stepping in with her head down and throwing bombs. So uh, it's, not the, it's not the fight that uh, she's capable of fighting. So she's to keep those those angles and keep that footwork going. Oh, missed a nice right hand here. Oh, good body shots from Sabrina. Bethina's going heavy down on that head when she comes in that clinch, making that neck tight. Yeah, pushing down, yeah. Heavy on Sabrina's head when she's coming to that clinch now. That's nice. Both That's fighters starting to get a little bit tired at this point. It's been a long, hard battle. Can't not be tired after 
five minutes of swinging punches at each other's face in a, a crowded room. It's the first time in, in years here in Victoria, BC. Thanks again, Champ Promotions, for letting us be here and watching, have, getting, being, having the pleasure of watching these girls punch each other in the face for our entertainment. Exactly, Tristan, exactly. Uh, it's great to be here. And Athena's, uh, it's a battle. I mean, it's a, it's a battle of an outside fighter against an inside fighter. So uh, really Athena's got to start using more lateral movement and footwork and, and letting Sabrina walk into her punches because when she stops, Sabrina seems to be able to land the hooks and the uppercuts and the body shots to win those rounds. So it's, it's a close fight. It's a it really is a close very fight. close fight. Yeah, I think it comes down to this round, personally. Whoa, big swing in the mid. Oh, big four. Oh, both four, both sides. Big hooks. Look, Athena heavy on the head, though, making her work. That's going to really slow down and make those punches hard to see. Exactly. Hard to land, right? You can't, exactly. you can't, can't, can't hit what you can't see. 100%. Big four over the top by Sabrina. Oh, now both girls are just swinging. Oh, nice angle. Oh, good four on the break there from Athena. Yeah, well, she's like getting warm for pushing down in the head. See, I, I think that's great, great form. I guess in boxing they don't, uh, they don't want you to <laughs> push down in the head so much. But oh, look at this big, big flurry of exchanges, hook, hook, oh, and the, and it ends the way it started with the flurry, flurries of punches. What an exciting fight! It's too bad they seem to have some extra energy. Maybe there wasn't a break. Oh, uh, well, maybe that was just the, the, uh, the, the, you know. The, the, the last bit of NOS before the end of the fight. Here we go, let's have a look at some of the action here. Oh, big four. Oh, two fours in a row there. Double jab in, coming in, working the body from Sabrina. Great combination. Look at that, still on her. Oh, and there she got beautiful pressure on the head and a nice, nice tight little right hook on the way out. Another right hand from Sabrina. Oh, and a one to the body. Uh, nice overhand over the top. Beautiful, beautiful boxing from both ladies. Let's set it up to Donnie Andrews. Let's set it up to Don Andrews. My friend, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. All three judges see it the same for your winner by unanimous decision. In the blue corner, Sabrina Simmons. You never know what happened in the training camps, but Sabrina, well, hard work to victory for sure. Yeah, really good fight, really even back and forth fight. Like I said, I think it came down to that third round, and and Sabrina was coming hard with a, a few, with the harder hooks there at the end, and uh, and she stole the judge's eyes, and you know that's a, a an awesome experience building fight for both women. Both women came, they brought it. Uh, they're gonna go back and watch that tape, and they're both gonna come back ten times better. I know it. On to the on to the next fight there, Andre versus Matthias. Uh, Matthias, sorry. Andre Ray Hall versus Matthias Holland. Here we go. Well, I'm looking forward to this fight, Matthias. One and one and three and one. Very, very tough guy. He's uh, been training hard at Island MMA in Victoria for a long time. Nice. Under Jason Height, he, he's a hard worker. He likes to. He likes a firefight. Very modest, very modest, but uh, he comes out banging. You know. Andre coming from Hidden City in Vancouver. Another scrappy gym I have, you know, really impressed with Cody early in the night. So I have no doubt that Andre is going to bring it all the same. Andre versus Mateus. Fight number three at Champ Promotions. Let's get it on. Here comes a fire. Here comes our fighter in the blue corner. Andre from Hidden City seems to be having some sort of uh, equipment malfunction possibly but he's coming down mark my words yeah Mateus is he will not miss mixed this race, night part Dutch South African and Chinese descent born and raised in Victoria Nice. He started boxing like four years ago, competing this year at Provincials, won the Novice Bronze, wow. wanted to stay active. 
continuing to prove his abilities in the sport. He loves boxing because it improves everything else in his here life. Here we go. Well, we have Andre getting into the Looking ring right City. here, right now. From Hidden City, the blue corner. He's here, and Mateus will be coming up here shortly. Here we go. Mateus, Island Boxing. I'm always impressed how busy boxers are able to stay. I'm looking forward looking. to seeing Matias Fine having for a long time. Just a gentleman of the sport. Oh, yeah, look at and, that. Uh, training look at that Island hair. LA That's at Troy, former national champion. That hair and that mustache, he's here, to, he's here to throw down. There's no question. Does he get to not wear headgear at that? Off to Don. Our third fight of the night. Three two-minute rounds in our novice 71 kilo division. This fight sponsored by EXP Realty. Introducing first to my right, man fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the all black trunks, representing Hidden City Boxing Club from Vancouver, BC. Please welcome Andre Rahal. To my left, the man fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim and representing Island Boxing here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Matthias Rosu Holland. Your referee in charge of the action at the bell is Mr. John Kobash. So I think your right hall is gonna have try to be jab heavy and try to you know move laterally keep it on the outside and set up that big right hand with his jab but um matias he likes to get on the inside he's very modest but i think he wants to get in here and crack you know does he why well, you know the cody from hidden city he wanted to come forward and crack too so you know maybe both these guys want to want to get down and throw down here we go round one both fighters in the orthodox stance coming out, exchange jabs, he faints, looking for a jab from the body is Andre. Nice three two from Mateus. This is the first patient fight we've had of the night, Tristan, where they're actually taking yeah, their time, taking and the time working and things out. You know? Both clean. Oh, nice more of a pushy overhand hook there. Oh, nice to the body for Mateus. Oh, good, hard overhand right there. A little uh, so uppercuts on the inside and a good tie up in the clinch. This is, oh, and a nice, a nice clean hook on the break, too. Great angles, great movement for Mateus. Andre still coming forward, though. Chasing a little bit, but still coming in heavy. Chin down. Looking, keeping his head moving. He's here to work, he's here to throw down, he's not deterred by anything. Great evasive movement from both men. Both, both guys have great footwork, moving well. Definitely a nice, beautiful right hook to the oh, body, beautiful. followed up by two left hands by Mateus. Yeah, when the he comes The first big forward. punches of the fight, Tristan. Yeah, when Mateus comes forward, a couple times he's come with these uh, blitzing exchanges when he gets his head offline and and follows up with the uppercuts in the inside, and it's had a lot of success. Seems to do more of that, keeping his feints going and blitzing forward. Left so, hand that Mateus slipped, but there, there's this good, to both good defensive yeah, fighters. Yeah, uh, Andre is, uh, is a hard guy to read, man. He's coming forward, good head movement, chin down. He's fainting. He's 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 chasing a little bit. Not you know, not if you could cut off a little better, but you know he's. He's not there to be hit a lot, even though he's coming forward. He's not coming down with his chin up in the air. What a first round for both men, you know? Like, I, I, I don't know what to say. Andre had great pressure coming forward, hard to hit. Mateus had some great blitzes coming forward, landing some good combos. What a very technical first round by both men. I'm excited to see round two. What do you think, Keith? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, here we go with some highlights. Look, yo, nice two to the body for Mateus. There's our talking when he comes through those blitzes and that uppercut through the middle. And he's landing a lot of shots. Nice uppercut on the inside from Mateus. There it is again, that uppercut. 
or that hook or uppercut. Just I like think that beautiful. double left hand by Mateus was the most significant. Look at that head shots movement. Of the round. He had it backed up. Yeah, I think so too. That was a beautiful head movement from Andre there, slipping off the inside, getting to the back. You know, if you're wrestling, I was on your back there. That'd be that'd be the round. Here we go, round two. So what do you think, you give Matthias a slight edge in that round, Tristan, or too tough to call? I'm sad, I'm, sad. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go there, I'm not a judge. I'm not getting paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting paid to talk, you know? <laughs> 100%. Oh, beautiful two-piece there from Matthias. Oh, oh, miss, 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 look at him out of the range. Matias is so focused in this fight. Yeah, nope. Nice Bo left hand off the face. Both guys are, Andre too is just very, very spot on and focused. Both guys are in it. They're, he's not deterred by that one combination. Oh, good. Good combination off the guard of Andre. But, you know, uh, uh, Matias isn't even, isn't, isn't Beautiful sticking around there. Yeah. Oh, nice little faint move. Here, Andre keeping the pressure on. Mateus moving well. Not there. Oh, nice jab from Andre. Oh, Ooh, what a stiffening yeah. body oh, shot. Oh, nice hook from Andre as well. Oh. Mateus just missed with that left uppercut. Yeah, that was close. Good to the body, both men here. Button their horns together. Nice left yep. hook by Mateus Falsch. Glancing right hand, but the left hook landed semi-flush. Beautiful, oh, both, both men missing here. Both swinging big hooks. Mateus coming with that heavy pressure. He's got Andre in the corner. He's got him on the ropes, he's keeping now. He's got that heavy pressure and he's cutting him off. Andre, is Mateus Ooh. cutting. Oh, now both men right in the middle. Beautiful right hand by Rasad there, he just landed a flush from range. I, oh, I think he's, nice gonna, he's better off the range, you know, using yeah. his range and distance. Both men are very comfortable, right, standing right in the pocket, right in front of each other. Big hook, swing and a miss. Two rounds done, wow. Both, these, both, this is a really technical fight. Both guys are, are, are really settling in to their, uh, to their rhythm and their ranges and, uh, and real comfortable slipping, moving, and, and, and throwing right back. Here we go, let's have a look. Excellent round here, we got to Mateus coming in, fading nice with the jab movement. off for assault. And then, you know, both sides of each other up at this point, but a nice combo landed by Mateus, body shot, and a beautiful oh, uppercut, uppercut landed by yeah. Rahal in that yeah, round. I mean, that might be the most nice. difficult part of the round. Oh, nice overhand by Andre as well. Oh, really good, really good round two. I, you know, I, I think it might be one round apiece, but I, I'm not a judge, I don't know. Uh, it, all I know is we get another round of this exciting action. I cannot wait to see what happens. Here we go. Let's get these buckets out of there. Tyus versus Andre. Round three. Nice jab from Andre. Mateus moving all off angle. Big, oh, big hooks. Mateus pushing down on the head again. That might have been a, a low blow, but didn't look very hard, so who cares? Oh. Both guys really impressed both these guys' conditioning. Both of them are real sharp. Both making intelligent decisions, both fainting well, both sharp, light on their toes, strong in the clinch. Oh, nice uppercut from Andre on the inside. The pressure for Mateus doesn't end. Yeah, he comes forward fully, and I knew he was gonna put the pressure on. That's his style, you know, he's, he's gonna come in and put a lot of pressure on things. Yeah, both these guys on it want to do that. So it's it, it's 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 turned into the the, the fans here, are the real winners, because these guys are just both coming forward and bouncing off each other. It's I'm gonna have to agree with that 100. percent The fans are the big winners here for sure. Oh, beautiful inside exchanges. Look at that. Oh. Good 
Nice work. Oh, nice hook from Lamb. Oh, uh, and right a return hand. for Mateus. Over Beautiful hand. right hand by Mateus there. Nice double jabs, touching his way in. <laughs> looking for that big up. Mateus is really looking for that big uppercut. He's missed, just he's missed, missed it twice. A, missed a few times. Just missed it twice, right. Raised. Ooh. Ooh. Good tie up for Mateus. Andre is just missing big punches there. This is grueling work right here. Yeah, oh, nice hook on the inside, but right back from Mateus. Wow, what a fight, guys. I mean, that's like Mateus you said. Mateus Raza versus Andre Rahal. What a fight. These guys. I'm so happy to that we had, we're not the judges in these yeah, fights. Yeah, I know. Because you know? that's another one <coughs> that is, is ready for the ages. Here we go. What do we got here? Beautiful clinch work. Towards the turnaround. Nice hook on the inside from Andre. Land with another hook on the exit. Oh, nice tight two right on the inside there. Oh, another four from Mateus. Good. Nice looking for those uppercuts in the break. Action packed fight for both men. <coughs> I think we have the judges' scorecards in. Let's send it to Don for the, uh, the announcement. Fight fans, once again, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. All three judges score this the same for your winner by unanimous decision. In the red corner, Matthias Rosu Holly. Very close fight, but uh, Matthias seemed to land the heavier punches on the inside, which, you know, from the Ultimate Fighting Championships, damage is the number one criteria. Absolutely. So I believe damage was the different factor in the fight tonight in that particular uh, matchup, would you say? Yeah, I'd say so, because I mean, it was every round is really close, but back and forth. But uh, Mateus is the one that was coming forward more, putting that pressure and landing the heavier shots, and he uh, and it made the difference in the judges' eyes, and uh, he's gonna go have a good time celebrating tonight. He really is, and he, like I said, he's worked hard for a long time. Very humble guy, and he got an interview with him last week. And he's not, you know, he's an explosive fighter, but he's not going to tell you that. He's feeling himself out and getting ready to compete, and hopefully make it someday where you are that one day. It's a lot of hard work, but you never know. Everyone's got goals, and, and you got to have a You got to have, have me. You got you to gotta stick with them, man. There's uh, a lot of reasons to quit in this game. And, uh, I, you know, in the end of the day, it's not, it's not who's best, it's who's left. So the ones that truly love it end up end up getting to where they need to be. Here we go. Next fight up, we have Mauricio versus Chris Tom. Chris Tom's a local fighter out of Victoria, a guy that uh, I actually met years ago that signed with Island MMA, came in with his mom, originally living out of Gordon Head, and he just wanted to train. Uh, not the most athletic guy in the world, didn't know what he wanted to do with the sport, but uh, came in and trained a couple times and never wanted to fight, but you know, a couple of years later, he's a coach and he's training in the gym and he's uh, fighting in his fourth or fifth fight now. Awesome, yeah, this is, I'm excited to watch him fight here and he has a, a test someone from uh, Mexico, it looks like, coming to the cage now in the, in the blue corner, Mauricio, Baldrez from Levia Boxing Club in Mexico. We don't have a lot of information on these gentlemen, Tristan, but we're happy to have them here. Yeah, they traveled absolutely. a long way, and yeah, we're man, looking they're... forward. You're, oh, you can't say nothing bad about Mexican people. No, oh, in, hey, know? Mexican boxers <laughs> are some of the toughest boxers on the planet, and that has been proven over and over again, and they are not coming all the way up here just to get beat up. They are here to to get some blood in their hands and uh, disappoint this hometown crowd. So look out, he, they, this is not gonna be an easy fight. Now, coming to the corner, we have Chris Tom from Island Boxing, the hometown guy. We're gonna start having the, getting the crowd all riled up. Here he is, stepping in the cage in the right corner, Chris Tom. Chris versus Mauricio, let's go. And set it up to Don Andrews. Set it up to Don Andrews for fight number four. 
our fourth fight of the evening. Three two-minute rounds in our novice 71 kilogram division. This fight sponsored by Listco. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing again the blue trunks with white trim, representing Leva Boxing Club from Mexico. Please welcome Sebastian Zamora. His opponent to my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, representing Crusher Combat here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Joey Daly. Right. No, I think there's a little bit of a mistake there. This is Chris yeah. Tom from, uh, from Island Mixed Martial Arts. Yeah. Uh, he's coming in right now uh, from... We've had a change of bout, ladies and gentlemen, and it looks like the responsibility is going to fall on me. <laughs> I'm going to take that from you for a minute. We're going to do this again. That's the best part about this. You want to do it twice? You want to do it twice? You guys want to do this twice? Sure. Again, we are two, three two-minute rounds in our novice 71 kilogram division. This fight sponsored by Lisco. To my left, in the blue trunks representing Leva Boxing Club from Mexico, Sebastian Zamora. To my left in the no, red corner. Still not. Representing Island Boxing and wearing the red trunks with white trim. Please welcome still wrong guy. Chris Tom. <laughs> Your referee in charge of the action at the bell is Derek Hoyt. Chris has just recently moved out from Brentwood and he's he's moved out to Brentwood from the Gordon Head area and he's he's just he's looking forward to put on a performance here. He's been coaching, training with uh, Brian the Caveman Call Antonio. Oh yeah. And so he's ready to go. He's uh put in a lot of work and here we go and then that either Mauricio or Sebastian from Mexico in the blue corner. I don't want to say his name wrong, but oh, Chris coming with some big pressure off the bow hop, moving that head side to side, letting letting Blue know he's here to here to throw the head off. Oh, big uppercut through through the middle here. Mauricio, oh, the nice double jab overhand there. A good left hook by Chris off uh, the angle change as well. See some more movement. Both fighters are sort of standing and waiting. I want to see some more. Oh, here we go. It's a nice little exchange here on the on the brakes. Good finding his range here from Balderez. Nice one, touching in one, two. Tom coming in with some heavier shots. It's nice to see the serious look of Jason Heights face uh, chat promotions executive producer here with one of his students trying to be neutral but you can see the <laughs> look on his face from one of his instructors and students and you know there's a lot of emotion in this fight for, on both sides of course yeah it's, uh, it, it, it's 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 hard to stay completely neutral sometimes even though you're the you run the promotion it's still your guys in there but you know that's why you so we have commissions that's why we have third parties to to help make sure it's a it's fair in there and no one's getting getting set up. Oh, nice big leaping in hook up and, and pressure from from Chris. Left hand by the Mexican right on the right hand, right above the rib kidney area that seemed to slow down Chris a little bit. Ooh. Oh, nice uppercut hook, double jab. Balderas, that is beautiful. Oh, Chris. good. He's starting to pick up his pace. He is. He's moving really well laterally towards the end of that round. He and was. that made the difference. Chris started to be a little bit flat-footed. It wasn't on the balls of his feet there. Chris is landing some big heavy shots in there. They're good, but, you know, he's putting a lot of effort into them. Let's have a look here. Good. See, there's those. There's Chris coming with some big heavy body shots, following up with some nice straight punch on the end. Nice overhand coming in with a good flurry. Got to see more punch on the break right there. Would have been nice. Good, nice. Finding his range, Balderson.
while we want to break here, we just want to mention that Tara Smith on the main event tonight has some hoodies for sale to the far left, and we're doing a fundraiser to help her get some money together for her fights in Paris and in England later this year. Here we go, round two. Oh. Oh, nice. Oh. Big spin off from Chris. Oh. Yeah, throwing down here. Right in the middle of the ring. Oh, good. Uppercut to the body from Balderez. Uh, you're right. Chris was moving really well laterally on the balls of his feet. Oh, oh nice big left hook. hook. Yes. Big left hook from Chris. He needs to be capitalizing now. I think he, he has Balderez hurt a bit. Oh, big, big punches from, from Tom here coming in, in right into the clinch. He needs to break, needs to not clinch up after these and, and, and capitalize on the damage he's, cre he's creating. I was just about to say Chris looked a little bit flat-footed. As soon as I said that, yeah. he walks in and starts throwing some bombs, Tristan. He does. He's throwing, <laughs> he's landing good ones, but now Balder Ooh. Oh, Balderas with a big body. Oh, he's Ooh. starting to turn things up Ooh, now. Two oh. in a row. Oh, now he's turning things. Balderas with some big shots to the body. Two he's finding his body confidence there, in a big way. Oh, big two, big, big power from Balderas coming out of, out of seemingly nowhere. Beautiful uppercut. Two Chris cut. coming here, coming, putting the pressure forward, ripping the body. Both fighters looking for a little quick breather, but no break for either of them as both fighters are exchanging big hooks and uppercuts on the inside. Nice straight left by Tristan after those body yeah, shots. Yeah, Chris is the, definitely seems to be the stronger fighter pushing pushing Balderez back. But Balderez has some sharp, crisp hands. And when he, when he gets going, it, it, is, it is nice to watch, let me tell you. Yeah, you're right. Those body shots, you can hear them halfway across the ring, Tristan. You certainly can. I can barely hear the whole crowd with his headphone on, headset on, but I can hear those punches, I'll tell you what. Oh, wow, what an end to the second round here. Really good this, round. This third round is heating up to be something exciting. All right, let's see some highlights in that round. Can't wait. Here, yeah, ooh, big pressure for the hook. Chris, good, oh good, look at this. Nice little touch, 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 power, power from Balderas. But Chris is not shy, he's just marching through it, no big deal. He just, look at that, dig to the body, look at that, comp. beautiful boxing. There's that body shot right there, Tristan. Yeah, that, that was heavy, beautiful, heavy, heavy beautiful. Beautiful hands from Balderas. I mean, Chris is, Standing flat footed, but like you said, he's he's coming in and he he's steps in and throws heavy punches. I think if he moved a little bit laterally, he might have an edge, you know. But he's he just could, yeah. Well, well, I mean, he, he, if he capitalizes after these blitzes and and, and pushing and pushing Balderas back and starts, he's, he's blitzing in, landing a couple, but then he's letting him off the hook and exiting for free. He's exiting out there for free. He's got to stay on him. Like this pressure right now, this is more what he needs to do, not back out like that. To stay in. In and back out and punch and go back in. And now this is what uh, Balderas wants, these, these quick combos from range. When when uh, Tom is looking to catch his breath, like he's ripped that body over 100%. and over Chris again. Tom's landed a beautiful right hand and stepped out. He also landed right. a good uppercut on the inside there. Oh. Balderas is really finding home for his body shots. Tom's got to up up the uh, the volume here right now. He's starting to slow down too much. He's beautiful movement, but he's he's, he's not getting anything for it. And now he's just falling into sloppy punches. Yeah, he dig deeper. But this, is, this could be one round of peace this fight right now. Who wants it more? Oh, Perez looking for some beautiful. Nice right hand there by Chris. Yeah. Just when you think he's got it, he's slipping back. He comes up with a big right hand up the middle. Oh, nice touch, touch, but good pressure from Chris. Ooh. Nice uppercuts. We haven't even seen him use those. Yet. Here we go. Final. 
final moments of the last round here. Who wants it more? Both guys. Oh, it's last 10 seconds. There's the good body shot. Go oh, hook, big hook. What an exchange. Yeah, oh, oh my God. What an exchange. What a Both fight. Guys what a fight right for the final fans. Bear, Bell. What an amazing fight for the champ promotions Absolutely. right there. Beautiful fight, beautiful boxing from both men. Uh, you know, I again, I'm, I'm happy I'm not a judge because I, I, you know, I think it was a round going a piece going into round three there, and both guys had moments. Let's see what some of the the act round here as Chris come with a big flurry, big hooks, keeping the pressure hot, keeping it on, pushing through, being the beautiful bully. uppercut left yeah, hand. Yeah, oh right? look at that, another uppercut, uppercut left hand, uppercut. But I bet you we're going to see some of that touch, touch, touch. Oh, yeah, jab, cross, jab. Beautiful. Landing, oh, the uppercut on the inside. Just beautiful eyes, beautiful accuracy. Here we go. I think we will have the scorecards are in, and we will set it off to Don Andrews for the decision. Set it up to Don Andrews. Any second now, we promise. Ladies and gentlemen, we go back to the judges' scorecard after three rounds. All three of them see this fight the same. They score it for your winner by unanimous decision. In the red corner, Chris Saw. I mean, Chris Ladder, the heavier punches. He seemed to be outboxed, but they could have gone either way. And that's what Chap Promotions is all about, is bringing you some hard-packed, Great matching, matchmaking where both fighters are so close, it's even the audience doesn't know who's going to win or not. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it comes down to when, when damage is, is equal, the one that's pushing the pace and bringing the fight often gets the, the judges nod. And, you know, I really believe it was one round apiece going to that last round. And, uh, and Chris is the one putting on a little more forward pressure in that third and final round. And uh, that's what got him the, the nod. And, uh, Another W for Island Boxing, and uh, I'm sure the, the celebration party is going to get messier and messier the longer the night goes here. Here we go, Robbie versus Reese. Let's go, Robbie Baldwin versus Reese Anderson. VMA and Crusher Combat, two great local clubs. Yeah, we Raising got to. great local talent, and uh, for sure going to have some... Uh, some fun things to excite each other in exchanges. I'm really looking go. forward to this fight. You know, you got uh, Robert Dirksen from Victoria Mixed yep. Martial Arts. It's one of his competitors, Robbie, young guy. And then coming you out of the corner fight now, I think. Yep. This is him coming right here. Beautiful. We got, yeah, Robbie from VMA coming down. on his way to the ring. And looking forward to seeing Reese Anderson from Combat Crushers, you know? Yeah. So Mike Jorgensen and Kerry Scar, you, oh, yes. you were at the first B first. Uh, you've yeah, been training parts of those well. for years, so I know he's gonna be, these both his athletes are gonna be in fantastic shape, and both they're putting their clubs on the line, and it's gonna, this will be a good fight, guaranteed. Yeah, I can't wait to see their guy, uh, their fighters compete. Yeah, you know, I know, I know Mike and Jerry for, Years and years and years, so always fun to see the the fruits of their labor here. 100%. Yeah, you were there for their original B First tournament five years ago. You oh, yeah. The Jiu Jitsu tournament back then. I, I was. That. I was there that night. I got way more than five years ago. How long ago was that? <laughs> way more than five years like ago. Like 10? Probably. Yeah, probably probably like, like 10. 10 years ago, yeah. Great, we just got a, a fan that came up to say hi to the booth. Great to see you. My buddy Tristan from the UFC. Great to see you. Hey, good to see you. How you doing? How are you doing? We got some local fans uh, coming up to say hi to the booth up here while we got a little bit of break in the action. Great to see you guys. How are you guys doing? Great. Awesome. Uh, nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> 
Here we go. Yeah, Hickson is quick. Robbie Baldwin on his way to the ring. Yes. Listen to that crowd. This guy has sold some tickets for tonight. Tell you what. Look at them all. He looks pretty fired up. Look, he's in he great looks, shape. He looks Jack. He looks ready to go, man. He looks like he's working really hard. And uh, he's ready to throw down. But not if Reese Anderson from Crusher Combat has anything to say about it. Look at him jumping into the ring. Looks you know, he's good, been training Red. hard. Yeah, with that Danny Pro that's in his corner. Uh, yeah. Reese was saying that he was a great a sparring partner for him, and we're going to extend it up to Don Andrews. Here we go. Fight number five. Fight of the evening. Three two-minute rounds in our novice 75-kilogram division. This fight sponsored by Suits U. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim, representing Victoria Martial Arts here in Victoria, B.C. Please welcome Robbie Baldwin. He's a muscular, more His powerful opponent across guy. the ring, fighting out of the red He's corner, so wearing the red trunks with white trim, representing Crusher Combat here in Victoria, B.C. Please welcome Reese Anderson. Your referee in charge of the action at the bell is Mr. Richard Deshan. Richard Deshan, a long time old school referee that knows all the rules and techniques of boxing, so both oh, yeah. fighters are in good hands safety-wise. And it, it, I've got a little bit of refing, and it is a hard, hard job. Uh, and an experienced king in that world, so these guys are in really good hands. And I can't wait, this fight's gonna be an exciting one. I can feel, you know, two local guys, uh, both both with a lot of a lot of fans here in the house and here, both from getting big cheers walking out. I you can feel the electricity. Wait. You're right, Tristan. You know, I mean, you know big fights, and this yeah. is one of those fights where you can feel and it in Reese the crowd. Looking, to come out, looking like he's going to come out southpaw against Robbie coming out in the orthodox. Both guys moving. Reese going to touch that jab. Both are going to be trying to set up that outside, win that outside lead foot fight and uh, set up their, their twos. Reese is a little, still looking to touch in that that jab, looking to touch it in. Reese moving really well laterally. Yeah. And it seems like... Uh, moving his head a lot more. Robbie's looking for that one shot yeah. up the middle. Or Robbie's head's a little, little up high, a little stuck in the middle there. He's, he's looking to land a big shot. He's a little, little stiff. Needs to start fainting a little more. Robbie's lighter on, or uh, Reese is lighter on his feet, looking to touch, 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 find his range. You can feel he's, Robbie's power though, because the one shot feel, that you yeah. said gloves, you heard the thud of it. So Robbie, I think he's fighting. Yeah, he, well, he can land a good shot. He's stiff, so if he lands, watch out. It's going to be hard. <laughs> Definitely. He's look. He's he's putting some. Real power into his punches. He's sitting down hard in those punches is Robbie. Robbie's he's just plodding, plodding. He's he's also not he's cutting he's not cutting off very well. He's chasing. But man, if he lands that one punch, he's gonna be a big one. Ra Reese though looking beautiful. Just land, touching and moving, touching and moving, just landing that jab, moving, moving his head, fainting, lighting his feet, hopping. Look at that beautiful faint right hand, getting the twitch, getting the read. He's got Robbie backing up now, breathing, sucking heavy, all those Ooh. labor shots. Ooh, but yeah. Nice he, left hand there. Nice Tristan. left hand, well timed by Robbie. Rob building Robbie's the confidence as he comes forward. Robbie's really got to move his head offline though when he's punching because I think Reese is down. putting these three piece, four piece combos together and uh, he's, He's stealing that round on points for yes, sure. Yes, he's definitely, um, that might be the most round that lean. Yeah, I think that's the most dominant round we've seen tonight so far. I have, I have to agree with that. Yeah, Reese, uh, you know, he's just, he's lighting his feet. He's he's uh, the more technical boxer. He's moving his head. He's bouncing. He's cutting angles. Uh, and uh, we're about to see it right here, I have no doubt. Oh, well, a nice little uppercut on the inside from Robbie. And now look, his pop, pop. Ooh, nice, nice straight left from, oh, another straight 
left from Reese. Just touching him with the jab there. He's moving in and out really well. What he is. He's, he's giving him a lot to think about. So he's just touching him with the jab, touching the jab. He doesn't like what he sees, and he's just moving. Let's see what round two brings. See if the uh, see if Robbie can make some adjustments here that need to be made. He's coming out hot. Ooh, I agree with heavy you, pressure. Though, you know, I, I, the only way I see uh, stylistically Robbie having any trouble or, or having success now is is to put on even heavier pressure and give his chin down yes. and put it on. But his chin is right up in the air, and he is going to get picked apart with his chin up in the air all day. It's an easy touch, touch, touch for Reese. But but Reese is starting to engage, you know, and well, you know, one of those stiff punches from Robbie is going to be a could end the night real quick. Some head movement, you're exactly right, would be in Robbie's best. Oh, beautiful. Look right at now. that, Reese. Oh. See, Reese, Reese is moving his head offline when he punches, and Robbie's not, so. 100%. Uh, it, it, it's every exchange, it's just Reese. Boom, boom, boom. And, and, and he then steps, he's gone. And he steps off as he throws He steps punch. off, yeah. He steps off, and it's, it's beautiful boxing. And that's Kerry, Scar, and Mike Jorgensen's yeah. strategy. That's you know? right. Ladder Cut movement, off, footwork. They have that ring in their club, you know, so they've been practicing, practicing, making making their way back to the middle, just like Reese is. Oh, but Rob, Robbie still got in the headlights now. He had a little success there. Oh, big headbutt from both guys. Oh, they all kissed each other there. Yeah, you know, you it's just good to see oh, another a head pressure butt. competitor here tonight. You know, they go back so far with Mike from the original Maximum Fighting Championships and Kerry Scar, you know, fighting Jermaine Randamine in a high-level kickboxing fight, the uh, UFC fighter. So yeah. there's just so much talent that they can produce to these fighters. For sure. Yeah, a lot of talent coming out of that club. Look at this fighter starting to slow down a little bit, settle into the end of the second round here. But Reese still, still landing those touching shots. Some big right, ha big left hands from Reese as well. Ooh, nice right hand from Robbie. We got Robert Dirksen here off to the right with his brand new baby from Victoria Mixed Martial Arts. Oh yeah, And his beautiful. wife, he's got his baby in his arms, but he actually came from the ring. He's got some concern. He, he wants his fighter to do right. We're about to Good. see some uh, replays here. So. I'm sure Rob just gives him some what he thinks is his two cents, you know? Excited new dad. Oh, oh. Look at Robbie coming forward, looking mean. Little headbutt there. Oh, see, Reese is just landing, his head's offline, and he's landing those, he's the one landing more of the shots. Oh, double miss right there. Man, what see, an exciting fight, though. Here we go, we see Robert Dirksen, fresh, brand new baby. Right there. He's concerned for his fighter, he was gonna yeah. hang back and let the other guys take the corner, but he's like, man, you gotta step up, you know, so Can't. he's Sometimes it, it's hard. He's, Sometimes he's coming it's up hard. and you know. Here we go. Oh Ooh, and beautiful Big right hand. Hook from as Robbie. Dirksen walks oh, up. Oh wow. But another straight left by Reese. Yeah, Reese. Uh, uh, Robbie is he realizes he is down two rounds now. And he is fighting that way. And this is what he needs to do. Look at him go. Coming forward. Head still straight up in the air, but he oh nice head movement there. But he is just does not care. He is coming forward, and oh, he is going to put everything he can in this next two minutes. And Reese has got to be up moving and touching and keeping that going because he is winning this fight. It would be not be smart for him to exchange in a firefight right now. Oh, Ooh. Robbie's starting to slow down a bit. That was a big burst from Robbie. Robbie's got to keep that volume going for this whole two minutes. He can't take any break right now. He cannot. It's not a 10 second go, it's a two minute go, and he needs to know that and, and fight with that intensity because he is losing this fight at this moment. And Reese is on the way to a smooth W if he keeps this up. Light the feet, hopping, hopping. He's, he's got that two lined up. He's got a tight, he, he, he can't miss with it. The thing had, oh, look at that head movement on the inside. Yeah, Reese's straight left has got magnets on it. It just it cannot miss Robbie's face. 
think Robbie is gassed. Oh, oh. Reese coming back with some more. They might have the first unanimous decision tonight unless, yeah. unless Robbie comes in and he actually landed a left hand well, there. Well, he, he looks great when he comes in with hard punches, but he's they're very labored. His head's right up in the middle and he, uh, and he can't keep it up. Uh, and then he's just getting picked apart other than that. So, you know, I you know, great effort, great toughness by Robbie, but uh, I think Reese is a clear winner in that one. I mean, I've been wrong, but I would be surprised. Hope to see some highlights. Oh, nice, nice jab from Reese. Touching it in. Body shot from Rob. Robbie misses there. Getting backed up. That's a hook to the body. Ooh, nice two from Reese right on the end there. Real exciting fight. Beautiful footwork, beautiful technique shown by Reese. Great toughness from Robbie and uh, you know and Willie to push forward and and you know he was threatened with some big shots. Here we go, going to Don Andrews for the decision. My fans, make some noise for these two. That was excellent. After three rounds of fabulous action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. All three judges score the same for your winner by unanimous decision. In the red corner, Reese Anderson. There you have it. Beautiful show of respect from both guys. What an exciting fight, both guys thrown down. Now we are going to be on to the next fight. Last fight we have before the intermission here. It is going to be coming up on the screen here shortly. Gino Ramos versus Lane Palmer. Here we go. Gino from Hidden City in Vancouver and Lane from Island Boxing here on the island in Victoria. You guys got a bit of experience. Just over 10 fights between the pair of them. Excited to see these guys throw down. See, we got Lane from Island Boxing at 67 kilogram. Here's his Gino Ramos from Hidden City. But it should be on deck, getting ready to walk out. Here we go, walking out. In the blue corner, Gino Ramos coming out to the ring. seen before. Keith back here, getting ready for the last last fight on the undercard. Keith feeling a little lighter. Back I at feel her. a little bit better, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah you, no man. worries. Here we go. It is Gino Ramos. I've been looking forward to this fight. This is a Lane Palmer. Yeah. They Lane. call him Lane the Pain Palmer. Lane I've, the Pain I've watched him spar a little. He's been boxing for about three years. This is his fourth fight. 
went from zero fights to three fights in a weekend. Wow. So he's dedicated, hard worker, positive, brings a pressure, and he's had an action-packed style. And, and you can relate to this, Tristan. Think about like your first fight, but having three fights in one night, and then you're in. And yeah. here we go. We set it up to Don Andrews. Here we go. My fans, our sixth fight of the night. Three two-minute rounds in our novice 67 kilo division. This fight sponsored by Veneret Supplements. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim, representing Hidden City Boxing Club from Vancouver, BC. Please welcome Gino Ramos. <laughs> Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, representing Island Boxing here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Lane Palmer. At the bell, your referee in charge of the action is Mr. Robert Hanna. It's great to have Don Andrews with us tonight, uh, working yeah. with the BC Lions and, and oh, Vancouver yeah. Canucks. He's the voice of the, obviously, of British well, Columbia, he's the, I think. You know, the, the best voice around this, these parts, I tell you. I haven't heard anyone else that even, even comes close to him. Even around back, these parts. Even back in the day when you uh, set foot in the Armageddon Fighting Championships, he was there, remember yeah, that? Yeah, he was, that's right. It was way back, you would rise FC as well. It's nice to know those days I was commentating your fights and now I'm working with you and, and you're still at this high, high level. It's amazing to see how everyone's got gone so far, you know? Well, it's too much fun to quit. Here we go, and we're off. Both fighters in the orthodox sense. Oh, look at Lane the Pain coming with some big, big hooks. Gino, not afraid to throw down either though. Looking to find his angle. Ooh, Ooh. beautiful right hand and an angle slip by Lane there. Yeah, they're very nice. Big, heavy power from Lane. I see where he gets his nickname because he is throwing heat on everything. Well, he's training hard with you know, Brandon Call Antonio and, oh, yeah. and Matias, Great. who we saw earlier. So yeah. the Peter and Paul Lopez, who you are familiar oh, with. Twin. Oh, yeah, the yeah. twins are absolute monsters. So he's at that level Look where he gets hard He's just every coming day. forth hard pressure. Followed him in a bit there, but that's okay. He's winning the winning the, the exchange with his pressure. See his eyes wide open to the monitor here. Just putting that pressure on. Just cutting Gino off and bringing on the pain, like they say. With Gino, he's he's right in there. His eyes are sharp. He's looking to hit his counter. Nice, nice two to the body. That was a nice but two to the body. Lane there. just comes right in with three or four right back. You're right. Gino needs to get his hands going. He needs to pick up the volume a little bit yeah. to have a chance. When he goes, he looks very not good. He's very sharp. Warning for the, uh, the old leading with the head. Lane stalking his prey here, coming forward. Nice, I like Lane's coming in with that hook, hook right hand. He's, he's landing a lot. He is, he's not, uh, he's not hiding anything. <laughs> he's, no, he's, he's coming he's, to throw this. He's, he's throwing in hooks, but he's, he's throwing the straights in there as well. But Beautiful the thing about round, Tristan is pressure. Gino, Gino doesn't seem to be hurt by this. No, thing. he's not phased. He's finding space. He's, uh, he's not getting backed up into the ropes and staying there. He's cutting back to the middle. Uh, and we have ourselves a fight in our hands. Here we go. Look at Lane bringing on some pain. Coming in with the over body body overhand. Can't go wrong with the old body body head. Look at that, there he goes here in a nice clinch. Oh, and we have Gino come in with a little bit of pressure on his hook, lead hook there. And the round. And with Lane, I think he'd be more successful if he uh, kept his elbows in tighter, because Gino has some body openings. He does. And we'll see if he's being Gino's able to take advantage of uh, Gino's uh, got accuracy and in, uh, in, in sharpness. 100%. And here we go. Round two. Oh. Teased us there. Here we go. Oh. Here we go. Beautiful.
beautiful body shot there. Yeah, by Neal. look at that. Oh, look. Look at Gino moving off the angle there. We got Anthony Varela, the co main event, uh, with his one of his training partners. Oh, yes. Elite cage side. Looking forward to that later. Lane just chucking heat. Oh, huge overhand from Lane. And Gina wore it well. So that was full power on the tempo. Oh, look at that little slip off side. That was nice by Gina. That was a beautiful step off into southpaw, left hand. Exactly, change, change angles and angles. Yeah, changed angles, switched hand, beautiful. But he, Lane's not letting him off the hook yet. No, Lane is not, <laughs> he's coming in with the same hockey fighter, head down, get your face, nice make it mean, shot. but beautiful combos though. Little clinch, he was gonna punch on the break. Both guys miss. Lane missing there. Both guys now really meeting in the middle. Both guys having success in these combos. Nice jab from Lane. Oh, nice two. Starting to slow down a little bit. A little bit. Well, yeah, you know, it's, it's been a heavy pace. Both guys are standing right in front of each other. Neither one wants to take a step backwards. So, uh, you know, it's going to slow down a bit. You can see who can punch better from this, this labor point. Who can dig deeper. And right now, Lane is uh, wow. looking beautiful at the end of that round. But, man, what a round for two, two really good boxers. I have to say, Gino had a good job of landing some shots to the body. Not often enough, but enough to... Uh, Slow laying down a little bit. Here we go, some replays. Oh, look at that, coming with a big flurry. Oh, nice, oh, nice counter overhand. Boom, big overhand right from Lane there. Nice two to the body. Like I said, I love Gino's body punching. Yeah, I just Gino's, wish he's, he's he, not enough. You know, it's just not enough to, he's got to keep that going. Well, he's doing a good job towards the end of the round of really uh, meeting Lane's pressure. Here we go, third and final. Oh, nice. Uppercut. <laughs> Big barn burner right here. Both guys just thrown down. Lane's bringing the pain, and he's got a whole audience over there. They're blocking all the fans' <laughs> views, so he's got a huge... Yeah, uh, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Take the whole corner of the, the room. Look at these guys just chucking heat. Champ Promotions bringing these high-level referees in here. Like you said before, you've done that job and are certified to do it. And I'm glad to see we've got these expert referees in here. Yeah, really, really important to have experienced referees in here with these guys. Make sure nobody's hurt. Look at these guys, because these guys are just chucking bombs at each other. What's defense that, who cares? More offense. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> nice body that. shot. Lane coming in. Just a war of attrition at this point. Who can punch more? <laughs> uh, that's I exactly love it. what it is. Exactly what it is. Oh, Ooh. we got a standing eight count the first for first standing into the night. Unintelligent defense on Gino Ramos' part. Yeah, although that pretty much tells us to tell this fight right now, unless he can come back with a big knockout, and I don't see that happening for Gino. Unfortunately, does not have the power. I don't think to. To put Lane down, could be wrong. Ooh. Oh, getting slow, whoa, whoa. Yeah, maybe, maybe I am wrong. Look at these guys just exchanging 100%. Whoa, wow, what, a what an end of the fight. What an amazing competition. Jesus, that was. 
The only disappointing is oh, that these guys time. are amateurs because they sure deserve a great check tonight. They certainly do. Yeah, well, they, they're they cashing in brain cells. <laughs> Chap Promotions knows how to match make, and they're putting on a they wonderful card do. for us tonight. So we'll look at some, uh, some replays of the carnage. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh. Look at that hook. Big pressure from Lane. Just disrespectful pressure. That's not, I don't care. Got the eight count. I think that's gonna secure him the win, but. And Lane's such a nice we'll guy, it's hard the, to believe uh, he comes out that like caveman lethargic, but we're gonna set it up to Don Andrews. Find out what the judges think. Good, good. Fabulous action. We go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. All three judges score this. The same for your winner by unanimous decision. In the red corner, Lane Palmer. It's good to have uh, Jason Height with us here, Chap Promotions executive producer. Uh, Sounds good, buddy. That, we're going to have a short intermission here. That's the end of the first half of the car. I will be back in a, a short period to get back for the main car. So if you got to go to the bathroom, you got to get a drink. And now is the time. And we will be back we'll with be some back more action here but with Champ Fight go, Promotions. Just really quick. These sort of events aren't possible without all these terrific sponsors. Shaw Spotlight's mission is to celebrate, engage, and connect our communities, sharing a broad spectrum of in-depth stories featuring fascinating people, interesting places, and inspiring stories from across our amazing country. Canada is home to vast diversity, heartwarming humanity, and unforgettable experiences. All of which can be viewed anytime, anywhere, on our social channels. My will to win outweighs any sort of obstacle and any sort of challenge that comes my way. I almost invite a challenge. I love competition, I crave it. And I think she twisted her leg there, that was not good. She is in pain right now. At that moment, there was this huge battle of like, I came all the way here to fight all the way across the country, and I don't want to go home empty-handed. If I could do anything in the world right now, more than anything, I'd love to be in the UFC. When the beginning of the pandemic, I had some really great opportunities that kind of just fell through the cracks. And um, mentally at that point, I, I had to make some, some serious choices and I ended up leaving my job to focus solely on training. That's what I do. I work at it every day. Quite often I have to sacrifice family time and celebration time. But to know that I could be a professional UFC fighter, it's almost surreal. I'm born and raised here in Squamish, BC, and, and I love this community. There's not one person in this community that hasn't been supportive. It's like, I'm from this little small town, like I could be a professional UFC fighter fighting all over the world. That's pretty crazy. LFA is a, is a fight league based out of the United States. 90% of the fighters that win that belt, their next fight offer is in the UFC. Going into that fight, I was a heavy underdog. The record of the girl I fought is the best record of any girl I've ever fought. There's definitely a lot of nerves going into that fight. Jamie Lynn Horn making her LFA debut tonight. We sort of got hung up together. She was reefing on my leg in a bad position and I heard it snap. The pain was so bad. I remember telling myself to tap mentally, but physically my body wouldn't tap. At that point, my brain just stopped. It just stopped thinking about the pain. It stopped thinking about the what ifs. And then it just went back to work. Horse is back up on her feet. 
I remember standing up and I, my leg felt like a spaghetti noodle. What a scramble. It was like, okay, now every opportunity I have to finish this fight, I, I have to give it full max effort because I just don't know how long my leg's going to last for. A new LFA Flyweight World Champion, Jamie Lynn Horn. Winning that, that title, winning that fight, I mean, it, it's absolutely amazing. It was the biggest opponent I've ever faced. I had some of the biggest adversities I've ever had to face in a fight, and I learned a lot about myself. Since I got home, all my focus has been put back into healing. My regular training schedule has now been replaced with um, self-care. If you feel it there, let's see how that goes. I mangled mostly everything that I could. We decided to take the non-surgical approach. With that comes a lot of being smart and not testing the injury and just trusting the process. We're gonna do a 20 seconds to the bell. I'm doing everything right. I'm ahead of schedule by a month. This is not gonna be the end of my career. I still have the ability to work on the mental game and visualize and, you know, put out there what, what I want next and how I'm going to attain that. One student wrote about me as a hero and I was like, what the heck? So, you know, it, it flattered, extremely flattered and to know that I could be changing or motivating, you know, even one or two younger generational women is just absolutely like amazing to me to be able to like give back to a community that's given so much to me is like the greatest gift ever hey it's great to be back thanks for the little bit of an intermission there but we've got jason height chat promotions executive producer and love to have him at the table and Tell us what's going on, Jason, what's going on with the show and what's been happening lately? Well, I mean, first of all, really appreciate everything that's going on here. The athletes are putting on a great show. The fans have come out. The sponsors have, have come out. Shaw Spotlight, Shaw Direct TV has done a great job of supporting this. Awesome to have you guys here. And just, man, like after that long COVID break, it's just so nice to have the, the, the sport back. I mean, it's been really, really hard on the athletes not being able to compete. For it, but I'm so impressed with how, how disciplined they stayed and stayed training through all this. Yeah, I mean, I can I can speak to being an athlete training through COVID is hard. You know, you, you, half the time you weren't even allowed to. You're, you're, you're sneaking off people's garages and, and, and into backyards and, and going into buildings that were, like, not allowed to be in, trying to be quiet where we get ready to just try to stay in shape for we don't even know, right, because there's no fights going on. And, and uh, when... As soon as you do start fighting, it's you got to pay. You're already paying to fight, but now you got to pay even more to fight. You got to pay everything because promoters are just saying that ones that were running were just saying, "Hey, okay, you know, uh, whoever wall is willing to do the most for us gets the fights." And it's that's not a way to to to, to build talent. It's not a way to well, a way we to we build can the see sport. it's back. We can yeah, see it's 100%. back, and that's that's the name of this event. Champ Promotions back on yeah. track, and it's clearly back doing things the and, right uh, way. And the, you know. Really what we're trying to do here with Champ Promotions is really build the future of boxing. Um, you know, I mean, it's so great to see all these amateur athletes out here. This show will grow in stages. It will grow with what the market supports. And the next one, the goal is the next one to do a pro-am and develop the talent in Western Canada, uh, starting in Victoria, all right? This is our hometown, this is our home base. And, uh, you know, I mean, Tristan, you're, you're a perfect example of, of a guy that came through the regional level through Victoria, uh, through the Armageddon Fighting Championships back in the day. And it's so rad to see it. We'll see where you are, your success is now in the UFC. And man, the, the amount of fans that you have behind you and the amount of support that you have behind here is awesome. Yeah, these, uh, these events are where they all start for everyone. And, and like, I always say fighting is fighting. It doesn't matter where it is. It feels no different fighting the UFC than it did fighting the AFC back in the day. You know, it's a, a, you get into this sport because because of these things, these opportunities, and and without them, we I would, I would never just without the AFC, I would have never discovered fighting and how much I love it, and uh, I never made it to where I am today. So I have huge huge thanks to the AFC and uh, in, in promotions like Champ to for giving fighters the chance they need to to do what they love and and get to where they need to be. It feels so surreal because 
I think the AFC Championship started in 2008. And uh, to be able to uh, commentate for some of Tristan's fights and, you know, be at his weigh-ins and then see him with Jason develop into the UFC and the promising career he's built, it's been like, I'm almost in awe here tonight, even though we were having like hot dogs a few years ago, but now I'm with a UFC high level fighter and thanks to Champ Promotions to bring us all together back and bring something back to the city that we've been missing for a long time. Yeah, super excited to, to be here and be a part of this and super excited for another half a night of fights. Uh, gonna be a great night, got a lot, lot of more talent coming up and uh, yeah, it's gonna be sweet. Awesome. Well, I guess the question is, uh, who is the future? Who's the future? I'll tell you what, Tara Smith right now to me, I think she's got a great future in this sport. She's our main event tonight. She just beat the number one girl in the country in Canada. Um, she's this far away from making the national team. As far as I'm concerned, she should be on the national team, but maybe I'm a little biased because I'm her coach. Um, but we are going to see a great fight with her tonight. Um, she's so disciplined, training so hard, and she's come a long way. I mean, she's so busy right now. We've had her, I think this is probably her sixth fight in five weeks right That's now. That's insane. Like, how is that even possible? Six fights in five weeks. Like, and, I don't even, even. And I, people don't realize she's a chartered accountant, a full-time yeah, chartered full -time accountant job. on the <laughs> side. But we can't ignore a severe Vendro, who's a hard competitor from Griffin's Boxing, so she's an excellent fighter herself, so uh, Terrace has to be prepared for this matchup as well. Absolutely. Griffin's is a well-known gym, uh, and they, they made a lot of really good fighters over the years, so she's going to have a stiff test in front of her. Yeah, we feel Terrace has got one more crack at trying to take it to the Olympics to try to get there, and uh, Paris is coming up soon, and uh, Hopefully she makes that team, and then if not, it's time for her to go on to the professional side of the sport. Yeah. All right, we're uh, we're get re just about ready to get back to some some action here. Thank you, Jason, for for coming in and talking, and uh, we're gonna get back to some fights. You're a champ promotion. We used an eight millimeter camera to film. We'd make a lot of horror movies or science fiction. We didn't really have a plan or anything. We just kind of did it. So I think the film just gives an excuse to build props and stuff too. So it kind of drove us. I think Greg was talking about a lightsaber or something. And I just happened to have a whole bunch of parts from something, a you know, machine I'd taken apart or something. And I just decided to throw one together. You know, it was quite pleasing to hold and stuff, and I gave that to him, and it just, I guess it just flicked the switch. <laughs> so I just went and made like 10 of them. And after I built that first lightsaber and came back and saw, you know, seven looking back, and I was like, like he just took it and completely perfected it. And then just started coming up with everything. I seem to have a knack on building things, so <laughs> other junk. It took a few tries. It probably took you know, an hour of just getting the feel for it. To experience someone who struggles to, to do anything, but is so determined, and he has absolutely no fear. There's so much craziness in this world that you have to do what floats your boat. <laughs> Shaw Spotlight's mission is to celebrate, engage, and connect our communities sharing a broad spectrum of in-depth stories featuring fascinating people, interesting places, and inspiring stories from across our amazing country. Canada is home to vast diversity, heartwarming humanity, and unforgettable experiences, all of which can be viewed anytime, anywhere, on our social channels. As you go at something for a while, you sort of build your own little barriers because you maybe failed, it didn't work before or something, so you don't even entertain that thought, where yeah. it's all fresh to him, it's just anything goes. I'm just impressed with his work and all the detail he does on stuff. He'll 
take it to the next level. This one's just been sanded. He'll actually draw things out first and, and you know, almost measure it out and plan out how many parts he needs and all that, kind of like an engineer. I like cardboard because um, you use glue and stuff and you can shape it with it, whereas with Lego you can't like physically bend it. And it just feels really good when I am doing it to build these giant things. Cardboard, Lego, and foam. Oh my. Nicole had mentioned previously that she wasn't really into doing the traditional maternity shoot. She was more interested in just getting the baby shots done. Todd asked me, so what do you think about doing kind of like a spoof maternity? I said, yeah, no problem, I'd be down for that. I wanted to tell a story. I wanted to make people laugh, but I wanted to do it in, in Halloween style, so we had to incorporate some horror into it. I happened to come across a one-to-one uh, -one scale model of a chest burster at a garage sale this summer. I do a lot of garage sailing. He brought it home and he was like, what if we did like... <laughs> Immediately I had like a sheer sense of panic, like what do you mean it's gone viral? I thought this is just kind of a spoof for our friend. I had so many people say to me, oh, when you take your art and turn it into your job, it's not the same. It's sharing culture and tradition that I love and the inspiration behind the art. To me, it's not really a job. It's just my passion. It's just creating what I love every day. Awesome. We're looking forward to uh, the upcoming fights tonight. We've, we just finished here in Mission, and we've got, first of all, we've got Jack Pye. I, at 91 kilograms. He's only 15 Jesus. years old, and this kid, he moves like Ivan Drago, like he's been training. Started off at West Shore, then he's at Island MMA. He has his sister as well, Ella, and the dad, and the kid's just, he's just the way he moves laterally, the way he, he throws punches and steps away. He just reads things really well, so... He's only 15, he's 1-0, and oh, and I've been excited to see him all week. Uh, for 15, he's never been, he's got a lot of potential. Joey Daly, he's from uh, Combat Crusher uh, Elite with Kerry Scar and, and Mike Jorgensen, a, a tough kid, and he's, it's his, his third fight, so there's not tons of information on him, but I know that, and Tristan knows, when you train out of Combat Crushers, and. And those guys come out in great shape and, and they, they wouldn't let you in there unless you're bringing something to the table. So I'm looking Absolutely. forward to seeing him fight. Sebastian is from the Levia Boxing Club, I believe, in, in uh, Mexico. So uh, he's a Mexican boxer, so definitely he's pulling out. Uh, this is a kind of an unknown to us. This is Glenn Ford from Fours Boxing Club against uh, Philip Lapias from Savard. So we're these two veteran guys, but we're looking forward to seeing them compete as well. Yeah, can't wait. Check them out. Force Boxing in Ibo and Savard Boxing. Next one, here we have. Um, uh, Tua, Tua, man. Tua. This kid is a uh, half First Nations, half Samoan. Uh, oh. Gentleman of the sport, legendary puncher, uh, great rugby player, yeah, and he's coming in heavy, him. so we're looking forward to uh, see Tua 260. compete tonight. Holy cow. He is going to be bringing the kitchen sink. And here we go, an old friend of mine, oh. Anthony Ver Varela, the, we call him the Cuban assassin, uh, had an opportunity to compete against his coach uh, years ago in a war. And, and Anthony's just looking really good. He's got three fighters on the card uh, that are combined with Jason and his club. And he's looking to win an, another Golden Glove, Silver Gloves. And he's fighting Gavin Bisla yeah. out of the elite Bisla Fighting Academy in Surrey. Uh, his yeah. brother's an undefeated pro. This is a rematch of a competition that Bisla won back in Vancouver. So this is the fight maybe I'm very, very looking forward to because both stud athletes. Yeah. Anthony's really got a lot gym. to prove really to come back. Gym. And Gavin's amazing. Ender Bisla's one of the best boxing coaches in the British Columbia area, if yeah, not all of Canada. For sure. Main event, we got Terrace Smith. Looking forward to a 
full-time chartered accountant. Just beat the number one ranked fighter in the world last week. She's had five fights, and seven, five to seven fights in 28 days. She's going to England next week in Paris and, and is a full-time accountant. And I was super looking forward to her fight. I saw her, her first fight. I've kind of known her for a long time. She had a really nice right hand, and, and now she developed that left hook and that right uppercut with it. Really strong, and I'm just a really good person. I'm looking forward to seeing her compete tonight. Here we go. Can't wait. Awesome. I'm mean, here with uh, <laughs> Ultimate Fighting Championship competitor Tristan Conley. It's just great to have him here. And we're going to cue in Don Andrews to introduce the first fights of the card, of the second half of the card. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a, a wicked night of fights so far. It's barn burners from start to finish. Super excited to see the second half of the card. And the, as the uh, experience goes up, uh, I can, uh, you know, fights just get better. The cardio gets better, technique gets better. And, and uh, there's been nothing to disappoint earlier, so I can only imagine it's going to keep getting better. You can right. see Tristan is still, you know, he's still training every day. We're glad to have him to come over here. Thank God his, his family is here. He's got a little bit of the bruises. He's always hard working every day. And here we go. We got Donnie go. Andrews. Back to Don. Chen, Force Boxing, Youth. These guys are teenagers still, but still down to fight in the ring like men. We're really looking forward to this fight, you know, Tristan, because it's two 15-year-olds and oh, wow. um, nice. guys that are having their first or second fights, and I'm really looking forward to it. You know, we got Nathan Chan yeah. out of a Force Boxing Club in Nanaimo, a, a good new club out of there. and coming to the ring right now is Jack Pye. Uh, excellent fighter. He's, he's only 15. He's 1-0, and but he trains like six or seven hours a day. I, I came into actually the local gym Island Boxing just to see him train, and I was going, who is that? He had his headgear on, and he had his gear on. He looked like Ivan Drago or something six feet tall. He was moving laterally, with, fighting with experienced guys, and changing levels, changing angles, and I go, and they go, oh, this is our new 15-year-old kid. So I was kind of really surprised to see him competing. And I'm really looking forward to seeing him compete tonight. Coming out the full row, ready to go. In his corner is Anthony Varela, who's competing in the co-main event tonight. So he's him and Jason student. So he's putting a lot of pressure on himself and his students. So hard-working team. And here we go, dude. We're ready to go. Well, and set it up to Donnie he... Andrews. How he handles the moment, Donnie Victoria, Andrews. are you ready for some more boxing action? Yeah. Not bad, but I think you can get a lot louder. Our seventh fight of the night, three two-minute rounds in our youth novice, 91 kilo division. This fight sponsored by Apex Apparel. Introducing first to my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with silver and black trim, representing Force Boxing in Nanaimo, BC. Please welcome Nathan Chen. His opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner with the red shorts and white trim, representing Island Boxing here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Jack Pye. Inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, John Kobash. Here we go. Round one. Excited to see these kids throw down. Some big kids. We're getting to the main event here soon, folks, but we're after the intermission, so the higher level fighters are ready to compete, so we're bringing the second half right into your living room. Well, I don't know if these guys are high level, they're just. <laughs> But higher level technically wise, like these guys are very, very good. Excited to see these guys. Any second now. 
making sure the headgear and all the equipment is just the way it needs to be to punch each other in the face. All stuff that should have been taken care of ringside, but we're still going to get this this going right. as soon as we can. Safety Thank first. You. Very important. Safety first. Especially with the kids, the young bucks, you know? Yeah, you're Many exactly Many years right. of smashing brain cells to smithereens. Here we go. Jack Berth is Nathan. Fairly even in height, so it's going to be a good yeah. matchup. Nice. Moving from Jack. Nice. Moving in with a double jab cross from Nathan. Ooh, Nathan beautiful. Touch. Yeah, both guys got great jabs. 100%. Both moving their head. Oh, nice. Nice two over the top. Oh, beautiful head moving from Jack. Just moving out of the way of Nathan's jab. Jack, Nathan's got a quick jab. Both guys moving really well yeah. for 15 year old kids. Right? Yeah, I, I take back what I said. You're at this guy's level this high. Look at these guys <laughs> move. Look at this beautiful. Right, Nathan's head staying a little, chin's a little high on these exchanges. Hands are maybe a little low. I like to see those eyebrows a little lower. Let's see what I mean know. by Jack. He's just one mistake. Well. And Jack countered with that left hook over top. Yeah, right? there it is. He's, he, well, Jackson did a great job of moving, slipping, and coming over the top with that overhand, that nice tight overhand over the top of uh, Nathan's jab. But Nathan coming on at that one, two, one, just touching his way in. Nice little lead hook there. He's moving out. Both great ring generalship from both both guys. Both guys very patient. Like yeah, you said, very patient. Probably the most patient fight we've seen tonight. Absolutely. Touching it. Both guys throwing lots of feints. Faint with their feet. Oh, nice, Nathan. Very nice, nice combo. combo at the end Finish of the round. round from Nathan. Could that yeah. steal the round, Tristan, or maybe not? I mean, that's tough. It's tough. It's close round. You know, uh, it, 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 it very well could have if uh, the judges weren't sure who to give it to in that round. But, you know, uh, both fighters were doing things very well. Let's have a look at what we got. Here we have. Nathan coming in with a 1-1-2. One, one, oh, counter two over the top. Oh, oh, miss, miss, miss. Nice, beautiful head movement. It wasn't. Here we go. I'm looking forward to round two of this one. Let's yeah, see what. Yeah, uh... absolutely. These guys are. Right, put on a really good show for us tonight. Here we go, round two. Okay, boom, touching gloves and they are off. Beautiful head movement from Jack. Nathan, throwing Loving the feints from both gentlemen here. It's hard to believe they're this age because they're I doing know. so. I know. What like, <laughs> do, do you get worse as you get older? Is that how it goes? I'm just confused. These, these kids look spectacular. Nathan's on a beautiful combo now. Beautiful body shot by Jack. Slipped underneath yeah. and landed that nice right Jack hand. Jack changed the levels real nice. He is. He's, I mean, they're both, both guys are fainting. Good clinch work. Oh, boy. Can't carry the pressure on and ducks under the hook. I think this is the right style for Jack is to turn it into a bit more of a war. A bit more, um, make it a bit more of a, a bit more of a bully. So Nathan is quick and has a very nice jab. Uh, it, it, Nathan's, Nathan's head comes up a bit uh, and stays in the middle a little bit. So that's, uh, that's where Jack can capitalize with that heavy pressure. Guys 
just taking a little bit of time to find each other, read each other's feints. Oh, nice. Nice four from Jack. That was a nice four. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, nice jab from Nathan. Oh, nice two from Jack. Oh, Jack putting that pressure on. Showing his, shows in his size. Oh, what a great fight. These guys are really, Jack's looking really, really good. Skilled. Oh yeah, big four from Jack. That's a beautiful Nathan right now. Nathan looks like he's slowing down a little bit. Man, you know, that might be one round apiece. Who knows? I don't know. Those are, those are really Fight. Let's take a look at some highlights from round two. Oh, we got a little blood coming out of the nose, Nathan. Oh, look at that. A book from Jack. Oh, good four on the way in from Nathan. Jack coming with the clinch. Good work. Good, oh, good four, Jack. Ah, oh, beautiful. I think Jack, Jack probably dominated a little more in the second round, but he's got to he's got to yeah. stay busy here because the first round was seriously close. So it's still any man's fight. Absolutely, it could be down to this third round. We don't know what those judges are liking tonight. So, so nice four from Nathan. Nathan seems a bit recharged here. He knows that. Uh, he knows what's at stake. Good pressure from Jack. Oh, nice slip, too. See what I mean? Just about how he yeah. time stuff and then circles out and lands things up. Oh, that was a beautiful pull, too, from him. He's, Jack's moving his head well. He's fainting well. He's touching with that jab. Nathan's got a very crisp, nice jab, though. He's touched Jack over and over again. Oh, big Ooh, shot. Beautiful right hook big and upper got followed row. by it. Nathan's second win is starting to fade. Jack's starting to pick up the heat. Oh, beautiful jab for Nathan. Yep, yep. Jack's well got to keep busy. He does, because Nathan has fantastic timing. Sometimes you have to worry about these younger fighters, whether they're overtraining, and you've been in the situation when you know when it's time to peak and stop and, and oh, rest. Yeah. And you never know what these young guys have done over the last couple of weeks. You're fighting every three days, apparently. Most of these boxes are, apparently, <laughs> <laughs> on the card. Fighting five times in five days or whatever. Nice rad and right hand rated by uh, Chan again. So yeah. Jack's got to pick it up here. He does. Nathan's also slowing down as well. Both guys are feeling the fatigue here and in the third round. Either fighter could steal the fight right now. Another right hand landed by Chow, but a left oh, hook by Jack Pine. This is a Jack. close fight. It's a close fight to see what the this judges say. This is a close say. fight. I give a slight edge to Jack, but Chad landed some valuable punches there towards the end so. of the round. I'd have to agree with you, Keith. I think, yeah, I think Jack has it, but Nathan was in that fight the whole time. It looked really good. Let's take a look, have a look back at that third round here. Oh, nice, nice two, so that was that pole two. Oh, nice step in hook and a two over the top with another jab. Jack pushing him over the ropes, showing his strength. Oh, nice, nice four on the break. Okay. I'm, this, I'm anticipating this decision. Yeah, no kidding. Here Set we go. Set it up to Tony Send Andrews. It down Andrews. Fight fans, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for yet another decision. Judge one sees it for red. 
Judge 2 sees it for blue. And your winner by split decision in the red corner, Jack Pye. Christian, we weren't sure because Chad yeah. landed some value punches at the end of that third round. He did. And that was a close fight. That was a, a very really close, close fight. fight. Very good fight. Well, I mean, I can't believe these guys are 15. I know. <laughs> They're going to be absolute killers, both of them. Future is bright for both these men. He's got Anthony Varela in his corner and um, showing a lot of emotion, which I don't mean to bring up, but he's got a co-main event fight against Gavin Bisla, an absolute monster yeah. from Surrey. So I hope Anthony gets back to the dressing room now, gets a pillow and a blanket, and yeah, no takes kidding. the other emotion out of his mind and gets ready for his own fight coming up re more recently on the card. Yeah, here we go. We're on uh, for our next fight. Joey versus Sebastian. Yeah, we're looking, oh, looking forward see. to seeing Joey Daly fight. He's uh, from Combat Crushers. He's one and one. He's a young fighter. You know, there's not a lot of stuff to say about him except for the fact that he's got great coaches, amazing world class coaches. You know, Mike Jorkinson from the MFC Fighting Champion. Of course, Just right yeah. around when the UFC started, he was competing in MMA as a pro. And Kerry Scar, a long time. Uh, world champion kickbox with over 50 fights behind her own right so they're definitely he's, I know he, he told me himself he's been training with Danny Prohl who's a great coach and a good competitor out of that organization as well so and Joey's gonna come out with those elite set skills yeah I can't wait to see what uh, with the brink of the table and Sebastian from Mexico you know again uh, we saw the fighters from Mexico earlier tonight and they, he was he was sharp so Know, excited to see what uh, what he brings to the table, and here we go. We have the first fighter coming. This is going to be Sebastian in the blue corner coming out. The Mexican fighter, Mexican fighter, like you said, good club. All these guys have shown that they have good Here's jabs and good boxing technique. Yes, sir. Sebastian comes to the title. <laughs> Sorry, to the ring. And right behind him is Joey. Joey is ready to go. Boxing Club from Mexico, please welcome Sebastian Zamora. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, again wearing the red trunks with black and white trim, representing Crusher Combat here in Victoria, D.C. Please welcome Joey Daly. At the bell, your referee in charge of the action is Mr. Derek Point. Carrie and Mike, they look like they could compete tomorrow to themselves, you know? Oh, are, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Here we go. Another exciting bout. Once again, another combat crusher athlete in great physical shape. You can yes, see right absolutely. away that this guy is built in the shoulders, calves, so this guy is working yeah. hard, you know? It's He's been training. He's been training for sure, as both guys are orthodox. Nice, find their range, the jab. But like you said, oh, beautiful right hand by Joey. But like you said, Very you never know nice, what these Mexican yeah. fighters are gonna bring to the table, you know? Oh, nice. Ooh. Oh, not, oh beautiful. Both guys throw, throwing sharp punches inside. Crushing right hand to the body by Joey, and a beautiful left hook by the Mexican. Yeah. Sebastian, right in the mix here. Nice job. Oh, 
Beautiful overhand body shot from Joey. Oh. Another right cr hand crushing in the body, Tristan. Yeah, he is. This guy's been mixing up levels real nice. <coughs> There's not a lot of defense here. Tristan Guys are landing to guys are just chucking. Oh, beautiful. Hook to the body from Joey. Both guys work, slipping and rip, working the body. Big body hooks from both fighters. Oh, nice. Sebastian lands a nice straight right out of that combination. I can't even keep up to what's going on here. They're landing so much. Good, crisp punches too. Oh, nice two from Joey over the top there. Oh, good hook from Sebastian. Two big right hands, you're right, right in a row. Slowing down just a, just a little bit. Oh, and I, I spoke too soon because these guys are not stopping. Sebastian coming forward with some heavy pressure now. Joey looking to turn things around, come back. Nah, what a first round. Wow, man. I, I don't even know what to say there. Both guys came forward. Both guys went backwards. Both guys got punched. Both guys threw punches. So that is what I, I mean, it's what I like to see from both guys as far as offense. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, both guys real, real tight position too here. Like, you know, you're not seeing a lot of defense, but they were, it wasn't that they weren't throwing defense. They're both trying to throw too much offense and they're both slipping and moving their head. Look at that, nice little slip and rip from Joey. Oh, big hooks, big shots from Sebastian. Nice two from Sebastian. Both guys standing <coughs> in the middle, just chucking heat. Here we go. Excited for this one, round two now. I don't know when we're not going to see an exciting fight tonight. We're like, it's just, everyone's bringing it, you know what I mean? Right, everyone's Absolutely, just chucking heat. Nice. Four from Joey, but Sebastian putting that pressure on, starting to back Joey up. Wow. Sebastian ain't afraid of no man. <laughs> Look at him coming on. Oh, yeah. but Joey's, Joey's trying to give him something to be afraid of. Look at him. Oh, nice, beautiful. Both guys are real crisp punches. Beautiful oh, yeah. left hand by Joey there. You see that one? Right off the head. Yeah. Oh, nice jab from Sebastian. Look at the jab touching his hand. Blood on the blood coming out of the nose from Sebastian now as he presses forward. Joey trying to make it bleed more by oh Another. beautiful hook, hook, hook. Oh nice straight right. Oh wow. Oh wow. Neither guy wants to give any round. Somebody wants the fight of the night, buddy. Something you're yeah. familiar with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful exchange. Both guys. Oh, wow. Holy cow. This is absolutely. It looks like everyone's like, oh, Sebastian pushing forward. Joey's still chucking those. He's moving backwards. Oh. Nice shot. Sebastian is just landing the club cleaner shots right now as he comes forward. Uh, yes, Sebastian well. is starting to edge his way into he the is. second round. I can't believe there's going to be a third round in there. I know. Joey's still putting about big punches together, though. Ooh. Still trying to punch back. He's just slowing down. Oh, Ooh. here we go. Double left hand landed from Joey. Ooh. Looks like Sebastian's a little faster right now, but oh, that was a big punch in the break. I think that hurt Sebastian. I think Sebastian's wobbled. But no, he's digging deep. He's coming forward. He's. Oh Holy my goodness. Cow, what a, what round. a round. I'm telling you, that's the round of the night round right the there. Oh, for 100%. That is, <laughs> that is cow. boxing right there, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. That is an absolute firefight. Highlight is the whole round. Let's just go. <laughs> okay, yeah, hook, 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 <laughs> hook, straight hook. One, two, hook. Highlight is a war. Oh man, this is great. Look at these guys. Oh, look at. Yeah, Sebastian's doing a good job of trying to move his head offline. He's still punching, landing. Joey's starting to try to beat it with Ferrasi, but he can't. He 
can't mat. He's not finding the target. His bastard is moving his head as he's punching. But Joey is landing in there, and he's landing hard, and he is keeping the intensity up. Matt, I don't know what's going to happen here. He's in the also third round. fighting tonight. You can see the emotion in Carrie Carr's face. They recently lost one of their instructor students, Ian Harrington, oh, no. to a death uh, over a year ago. So there's a lot of emotion in this fight, and I think a lot of them are fighting for Ian tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Here, look at this. There's. No steps backwards. Look at this. <laughs> Beautiful. Sebastian's moving his head nicely and hitting the counters. Joey's just trying to come right in with intensity. A warning there for the, the throw from the clinch. Joey's got to move his head off on a little bit more when he's throwing punches to the head. He, when he's mixing up those body shots in, it's happening. Oh, look at that. He doesn't even Beautiful. get into a trade fest like this. No, he doesn't want to get into a head hunting much. fest. He's going to keep those body shots going that he was doing before. But oh, both wow. guys now are just willing oh, to accept wow. the trade. And this is fight. now what Joey wants. What a fight. What a fight. Listen to that crowd scream. Beautiful right hand Oh, right my game. goodness. And it's it's technical. They're throwing heat, but they're, they're, they're seeing the openings. Oh, beautiful combo there from Joey. See that? Oh, oh so that, that's what's going to mix that body up. But Sebastian's starting to feel his, his ninth wind or 20th wind, whatever wind we're on. But he's he's feeling He's coming back. I just want to, I don't even want to say anything. I'll just sit back and watch. So, you got popcorn? Somebody give these guys a locker room bonus. You know yeah, no, well, at least give them a beer. So oh, wow. This round seems so long too. It's just I endless. know it's, it's just one combo. It's they're still throwing the same combo. <laughs> nice one two. Oh, nice two roll from Sebastian. Oh my goodness. Oh, what a round! Wow, what a fight! Joey what landed fight. that last right hand. Is that going to be enough? I have no idea. I have no, I really idea. Have no idea. I'm not even going to try and. Just gonna wait for the judge's scorecard. What a fight, what a fight. What a great fight in honor of uh, the past, Ian Harrington, amazing guy. He fought uh, a good friend of ours, Sean Hill, on one of Stan Pedrick's cards years ago. Let's have a look at the card here. Wow, look at these guys. There's not much to say, it's just a war. Right, everyone's throwing right and left hands at these highlights. Look at those combos. No one wanted to quit, no one wanted to move backwards. This is what fighting's all about, you know? So many things, so many factors. Let's go to Don Andrews I would, for our oh, winner. I would be surprised. Oh, Don Andrews right. seems to be having a. Here we go. Your winner. Boxing fans, are we entertained? That was amazing. Tremendous, tremendous effort from both athletes. We got to go to the judge's scorecard for a decision. Judge one sees it for red. Judge two sees it for blue, and judge three sees it for your winner by split decision. In the blue corner, Sebastian Zamora! It was so close. And I'm what? just glad we got good judges that aren't giving out hometown decisions, and, and Sebastian yeah. earned his right to have a victory team. What did you say, Tristan? He did, he looked great. Awesome fight, what a, everyone won tonight, no one's gonna, Win lots, you know. So on their amateur record, it's uh, that experience both fighters gain from that is priceless. Like both guys are gonna come back so, so much better. 
Yeah, definitely. Those are the guys that earn the right to, to go somewhere in the sport. Yeah, absolutely. You can't both. teach that kind of heart, you know? You no, know, both both fighters have yeah, they had they're gonna go back and they're gonna they're gonna level up their skill, but they both have what you can't learn and and they're gonna they're, there's a lot of confidence to be gained from for both fighters in that fight. Here we go. Phillip versus Glenn. Let's see, we got Phillip. Phillip's from the Savard Boxing Club. Savard Boxing. And, and Glenn's from Ford. And Forrest Boxing and Dynamo. They both had like 25, 26 bouts, but uh, I think they were, they showed up a little bit later. I'm excited to see what they're capable of tonight. Yeah, and, and that's the important thing is. Phillip's, you know, kind of showed him more of a compact fighter, and Glenn likes to probably use his range and, and you know, and try to keep you at the end of his punches and drop right hands on you as you walk in. But we're gonna find out what these gentlemen are about. They're probably the most experienced amateur fighters on the card besides Anthony yeah. and Terrace. Yeah, these guys are open elite. No longer novice. Exactly. A lot, plus of fights. a lot of experience in the ring here. And here Philip comes. Savard boxing. He's definitely the thicker, stockier fighter. His opponent, Glenn. We're gonna send this up to uh, Donnie Andrews. Don oh, Andrews. No, no, not yet. We still got, Glenn still gotta get out here. Glenn's on his way out. He's walking ahead of his corner. He looks really confident. Here we go. He's like he's got a lot of energy. He's ready to go. Definitely I tall, mean, rangy. Definitely. See if he uses it well. We'll step it up to Don Andrews. Yeah, send it to Don Andrews. Let's go. Fight fans, this fight, three, three minute rounds in our dogs. open elite 67 oh. kilogram division. This fight sponsored by Kirby's Source for Sports. Introducing first to my right, the man fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the all black trunks with a white trim, representing Savard Boxing Club in Surrey, BC. Please welcome Philip Leopard. His opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white stripes, representing force boxing in Nanaimo, BC. Please welcome Glenn Ford. At the bell, your referee in charge of the action is Mr. Richard Deschamps. Should be landed. There you go. All right. Here we go, the veterans. The veteran amateurs. The veteran amateurs, they've got 20, 20 plus fights. We're looking forward to seeing them banging yeah, out. Yeah, I can't believe how many fights boxers get. There seems there's a, like there's a bit of a side difference, but there must be a lot of weight in the legs or in the hips area here. So. Yeah, well, you know, different frames, different bodies. Depends how they use it. Here we go. Philip and Glenn. Philip in the blue corner and Glenn in the red corner. Oh. Glenn coming out southpaw. He is. He is, yeah. Look at beautiful jab. Glenn, he's a longer guy, fighting long. Beautiful jab, beautiful cross. Uh, and hell, well, I don't, do you believe it? But the, the shorter fighters coming in with oh. good head movements and big hooks. Yeah, he's Both fighter knows how to you knows they know they know their role in this fight. Well, he's not even beautiful. using him, he's just trying to hunt him down to the ropes. Well, he's <laughs> he's getting he's slipping off line, he's getting in, he's Ooh. hitting that body, he's hitting the hooks. Just missed beautiful that left Phillips. hook. From up high. Oh, that lat touched a bit, I think. Look at these. Phillips doing a great job of changing levels, making him not know whether he's coming up high for the, or going to the body. 
But Ooh. Glenn is beautiful straight, beautiful jab, beautiful cross. Sneaky left hook was Look at like that a ang off angle. Oh. Almost like a hybrid left hook, like a half hook, yeah. half straight. Oh, get the headgear. Uh, equipment malfunction. Yes, and that. Oh, I don't even know if that's repairable. We're going to have to call a, a timeout in the judges' court. Yeah, here. I don't know. Did it rip right out? Headgear seems to be. It ripped right out for sure, but yeah, what a great right. manufacturer yeah, move by uh -oh. the corner there to. Uh, well, they'll make, make something going. happen. They'll tape it. I'll put super glue on it. He'll get it going. He'll that hold it together with his teeth, maybe. I don't know. I'm don't sure he'll figure it. something out, though. There's enough headgear in this place. I'm sure someone else has some blue headgear. <laughs> it's a good fight, though, man. It These is. Guys it's a really are fast good fight. And athletic. And uh, he's coming out. He's not using Yeah, it. I'd be he... ashamed to see uh, something happen to the fight because of. Uh, well, he, I just, I just think he's got to use a little more head movement and slip his way on the inside because right now he's just walking go. in on the inside. And Looks like it's, it's, it's back on. Oh, he just ran right in there and landed a hook. Uh, keep his head up. Well, Phillips, Phillips angry about his headgear and he's taking it out. He's, he's not cutting Glenn off. No, he, he just and wants that's to letting Glenn just touch him with the jab over and over again. He's, he's got to get back to his feints and his level changes that he was doing earlier. Otherwise, Glenn is just gonna pick him apart for the rest of the round, the rest of the fight. Look at this, beautiful, just touch, touch, touch. Phil needs to get back to that level changing, that fainting he was doing and cutting off the ring. He's fighting too emotionally because he's getting touched right now. Over and over again by beautiful, beautiful straight shots. Like Phillip. you said, Tristan, he's, if he used a little bit of head movement, slipped his way in, he might be successful, but right now he's just walking in, but he actually landed a great right that hand. Was, right that was there. a beautiful right hand over the top. Oh, big power. He's just trying to wade through fire and fury and throw absolute, unleash all hell with every punch. And Philip is just, just riding the wave, he's just touching him. Uh, you know, Phil is not happy um, with his headgear. We, we so kind of knew that headgear was not going to. Yeah, so uh, we're just waiting to see what happens here now. Oh, we got chat promotions. Jason Heights has Jason, come Jason to the Heights to come in and see if he can magic that headgear back, back together, and make it work. Is it on? Is it ready? Jason Height I think, yeah, to Jason save the Height, day. Jason Height saved the day once again. I think oh, and right. he eats an uppercut right off the, the bat. Glenn is really finding his range. Fine. He's, he's, he's got the space. He knows the he knows what's going on. I mean, Philip is bobbing and weaving well, but he's not moving well, laterally. He's not, he's not moving his head. He's, he's chasing, his head straight up and, and he's not fainting. He went, At the beginning exactly. of the first round, he was chasing. He was cutting off, and he was fainting. Yeah, exactly. And he was having success, but now he's just walking into things. The key word, uh, he's not fainting. He's not fainting, yeah, and, and he's not cutting off. So, you know, that, that, you know, that was uh, an exciting first round for sure. Can't wait to see some of the highlights because there's some big, big power punches from Philip. But Glenn just looking super beautiful, just touching, touching him up. Ooh, look at that head movement with the big hook. Look at this, touch, 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 circling off, pivoting off. Eats a hook, a couple hooks there on the way out. Touch, oh, look at that little three piece. Touch, touch, touch. Big swing and a miss. Big hooks to the body from Phillip. Here we go. Round two. I can't believe it's only round two. Is this only round two? Yeah, because all those headgear stoppages. Oh, wow. Look at Glenn just touch, 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 touch. 
But he, if he's going to do that, he can't back himself into the yeah. corner because that's what Phillip but, wants. He but wants Phillip's to not afraid of his power, so he's just walking on to it. Yes, exactly. Uh, with, with confidence. And that's oh. why he'll have these big power shots. Nice little but body combination. He, he's blowing his wad a bit, I think. And I don't know that he's able to keep this intensity for as long because now he seems like he's slowing down a lot, which just allows Glenn to outpoint him over and over and again. And Glenn's blocking most of those punches, like he you is. said before. But Glenn's got to say, oh! oh a big go. left hook out of nowhere. There you go. Now, Glenn's got to sit down on his punches. Look at that. That's a bit better. Glenn's starting to sit down a bit more yes. because uh, he's realizing he can land everything, but Anthony's or as Phil's you said, the tap, the tap, tap thing ain't gonna yeah. last forever. So he's gonna yeah. sit down on those stretches and, well and take, make Philip pay for yeah, coming Phil's up Phil's willing to take ten to land his one. Oh, good. Ooh, just missed another right hook. Yeah, nice double, double touch two. <laughs> oh, beautiful. He's got a Mike Tyson style. Yeah. Glenn's starting to sit down a bit more. He's finding his range well. Ooh, big swing and a miss. And Phillips. Oh, Phillips just eating punches. I mean, he's taking them, but he's, you know, he, it's not a good look. Just keep walking on a punch without landing anything in return. Ooh, he's got oh, he a is, big left he hook, is though. He's fast, though. Very fast. Very Man, fast. He, He's I mean, gotta, he's, he can't just stand in front of him. He's got to get out. He's got enough time to steal this round and then win the next one. So he's got to clean up a few things. He's got an opportunity. Yeah, if he's he got to right exactly stay in. He's got to counter. He can't just get tied up every time. See, this Glenn is, is fighting beautifully. He's just making a miss and then tying him up when Ooh. he forces his way in. And those misses are big wins. They're misses, big. You know? They're, 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 they'll gas you out all day long. They are. Well, and, 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 and Glenn's just got the range understood. He's judged, he's making, he knows he's safe. You know, it's beautiful boxing when I, uh, you know, it looks like it's about to kill the guy and it, it just misses by a millimeter and he's comfortable, he's safe, he knows, he comes back. He's, he's blocking the big shots. Big ferocity from Phillip, and, but you know, it's little results for the most part. Nice step off hook. His right hand. The left hand, I should say. Round three. Beautiful fight. It's a great fight. Just when you expect a non exciting yeah. fight, you yeah, really Glenn's, sit back for a second. Yeah, he comes no, back again. Buddy. Glenn's amazing. Absolutely technical wizard. Phillips, powerhouse. Fast as they come. Let's look at these highlights here. Whoa, that was the, that was the biggest punch of the round for sure. But here you see Glenn sitting down a little more. But Philip coming with some hooks after, swinging and missing. Glenn, Glenn using that late, that length. Here we go. Round number three. We're ready to go. I mean, I wonder if Glenn might be a little bit tired because he's throwing a higher volume of punches. And like you say, he needs to sit down on some of these things. He is well, but. Oh! What a right hand. Yeah. Equally, right hands and left hooks are both very equally powerful. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, hooks are, especially uh, Phillips hooks are very hard, we can tell. Ooh. Big hook from Glenn as well. Oh, big power from Philip. Puts one of those in the chin and we might have a, have a first knockout of the night. I, I wonder if Philip's starting to take this fight over because like you said before, the tap, tap, oh. tap thing is, oh, He's mouth guard. Mouth guard, and, guard yeah, out yeah, right yeah, now. Right. And that's usually a sign of tiredness, you know? And yeah, he's breathing heavy. He's got, looks like a boil and bio mouth guard, which no wonder that falls out. No spearing. Nice, beautiful head movement. 
from Glenn. Oh. Phillips looking for that one punch. And, 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 and Glenn's doing a smart move by tying him up. He, he might is. have thought he won the first two rounds. He's a little bit tired. And, yeah. Uh, He's eating keep some big shots. And, I, and, and Phillips is looking for one punch now. That's all he's doing. He's looking for one punch. Yes. I think he feels down. And he's trying to land the bomb. I'm not even sure if he's taking it over this fight now. Like, this is another glad reason we don't want to be judges, you know? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Glenn's still landing the shots, though. He's still chipping away. Oh, danger, though. High voltage at every turn. Ooh. Bombing. Oh, another oh, right hand. Miss. See, now he's starting to use some head movement. There you go. See, this is what he, he should have been doing the whole earlier. time. Oh. And Chris nice is now moving. And Chris nice is now moving Glenn. laterally again. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, big flurry. Those are scoring punches. He's got to come up with a head shot after that, though, because he's hitting body, 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 and then knocking me upstairs. He's got body, body, head, body, head. Mix up the levels a little more and he'll land some of those bigger punches, I think. Glenn slowing down, slowing down. Ooh. Oh, those oh. are how you, oh, hold. Yeah, those are nice body shots. They're both. Here we go, last 10 seconds. Oh, nice. Nice one, two. That was a one, two, one. Beautiful. Yes, exactly. A one, two, one, man. All landed. Yeah. Oh. Wow. wow. I don't know what to say except uh, yeah, that, that was, was another, a great fight another to great watch. Fight. Nice to be ringside for it. You know, like that was awesome. Yeah, that was a great fight. I, uh, what? See some of these highlights of the action here. Ooh, nice overhand. Clipped him there. Was, there's that mouth guard coming out. He tried to catch it. Big hook from Phillip. Another oh, hook over the top from Phillip. Yeah, that might have been Phillip's round right there. Yeah, look at the nice speed on those body shots. Yeah, if he put one headshot in that mix, that would. Are we been. gonna have another split decision here, Tristan? Because I could. don't know what's gonna happen. It's good. That's a tough. That last round is tough to score. Really tough to score. Set it up to Don Andrews. Let's go. Find out what the judges think. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. The judge's decision, your winner by split decision. In the blue corner, Philip Leopold. How did he stole the, the, the last half of the second round and, and then the third round maybe, what did you think? Could have been, yeah. yeah, I mean that was a real close fight, real, real back and forth. Split decision sounds about right because both guys looked great, both had moments and uh, you know, that was uh, a lot of fun to watch. And like you mentioned earlier, I think uh, he should have sat down on his punches a little more, made them a little more powerful, and, and they weren't hurting him, uh, Phillips, so he just kept coming forward and throwing bombs, you know? Yeah, he, you know, he he, he, he waded through that fire, and, you know, you could tell that uh, Glenn started sitting down on the punches a little more in the second round, but Phillips just, just dog wasn't uh, unwilling to waver and just kept coming forward. Now, on to the heavyweights. I've been looking forward to this Here one for a long time. Here we go. Yeah, we got two on the card tonight. He's half First Nations, half Samoan. And that <laughs> that means he's got a great chin. He oh, played yeah. for the Velox Rugby Club. Look at those lunch boxes he's got chucking around. He's got great power and great intensity. And um, he wants to say hi to his family tonight. And really well pronounced well-educated gentleman he's not just a big brawler but i went in and had a chance to see him spar and man he throws bombs and he hits heavy and he's got that smoking chin on him so 
we're definitely going to see another exciting fight. Beautiful. Can't wait. Always fun to watch the heavyweights, Chuck. Hopefully they got the cardio to, uh, to make it last. And Lee Andre is another one of the Mexican fighters that uh, we're looking forward to seeing tonight. Coming all the way over here to put up performance and, and, uh, and a heavyweight Mexican too, so that's always interesting. We're looking forward to having that opportunity to see him compete tonight against Tua. And it's gonna be a, it's gonna be another great fight. We haven't these guys are like super heavyweights. Yeah, these like. And these Mexicans <laughs> have been impressive. They have real, been very real, impressive. Real impressed tonight. them tonight. That set it up to my main man, Don Andrews. Let's go. I think we've got a ways. Neither of the fighters are in the, kit, the ring yet. Here we go. We got Lee coming down. Coming down the pipe right now. <coughs> Big boy stepping in the ring. Here we go. Okay. He, Lee Andrews, he looks like, you know, the. He's not uh, a bodybuilder, but you, you can tell that he's got some heavy, heavy punches. And and I know that he's got an amazing chin. We're going to set it up to... Oh, yeah, he's... Uh, we're about to set it up to Don Andrews, but we got a sec here. We're waiting for two to come out. A guy we're all looking forward to. A huge fan base. Huge fan base. Former Vivalox rugby player. A guy that brings Hawaiian, Samoan, everything with him. Big fan he's base here. Colors. <laughs> Last guy, sure getting into rugby fights all the time. And we're going to set it up to Don Andrews. Yeah, let's go. Fight fans, our 10th fight of the evening. Three two minute rounds in our novice 92 plus kilogram division. This fight sponsored by Lisco. Introducing first to my right, the man fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with white and silver trim, representing Leva Boxing Club from Mexico. Please welcome Lee Andrade. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, also wearing red shorts with white trim, representing Island Boxing here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Tua Va'a. Inside the ring of the bell, your referee in charge is Mr. Robert Hanna. Definitely, we're so, gonna see the big boys throw it out tonight. You know, those were the, the rugby following here in Victoria is huge. And uh, you know, you can tell with the, if you listen to all those fans screaming his name. We've got a Mexican against a half Samoyan, half First Nations fighter. So you definitely, you can guarantee these guys yeah, don't, can don't, take don't damage. Don't count on defense. Hello, offense. Probably getting get in trouble for saying Ooh. that somehow, but well, that nice was very right nice. Hand by beautiful Tua. head movement from Tua. Oh, oh, nice little, you know, nice little hook on the the exit from Lee. But he was well blocked by Tua. He had yeah. that. Oh, look at. These guys are actually quite good defense, both of them. They, they, they're such big guys, those gloves look so small. <laughs> they're probably 12s, but they look like 10s to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Guys feeling each other's strength a little bit. Reminds me a lot of David Tua, a former heavyweight boxing champion that competed against Lennox Lewis oh, back in the day. Big step in punch by Tua. Tua, oh, good, oh. good uppercut. Oh, unloading here. Oh, nice. you got the first oh, time of the night. The first Tua, what an amazing Tua. performance. Oh, no, it's the standing eight count. Wow. Almost out on his feet was Lee. Unbelievable pressure and pace from Tua. 
Are we wow. anticipating the first stoppage of the night? I think we might have another stoppage coming here pretty quick. Oh, this dude, Two this, FCs red. This is over, done. folks. Oh. Somebody better step in because yeah, this has been. to be stopped. There's no way you can the give second. this guy another standing eight. He's going to get a second one, but one more, and that is it. And I don't see Lee making it out of this first round. But he's showing I that he wants see, to fight. I, he's I showing don't. that Mexican heart. No, see. <laughs> no, and he. Yeah, you got to throw in the towel. His corners, great, great his corner. Great corner. Great, great corner. Corner. Great by the great Mexican coaching. Fight great coach coaching. there. You got to keep these athletes safe. Yeah. They're amateurs. No, no, no. There's no way great you can let coaching. that keep going. And yeah, great coaching. Great performance and good chin. And, yeah, and, 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 and hey, you know what? That's why him. what a good coach does. Because the fighter always want a good fighter is going to want to stick in there. And, you know, hats off to Lee for wanting to get back in there. But the writing was on the wall with that one. Two was going to put him away if he came out again. Uh, and, you know, I can't, can't say enough how much I respect that coaching. And there's no one happier than yeah. Brandon the Caveman Call Antonio, who's supposed yeah. to be the main event tonight to see his training partner succeed. And we're looking forward to seeing Brandon on future cards here in chat promotions and maybe even some national championships. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here we go. Let's look at that. Highlights of this. Stop. Big. Well, this here's the first one when he's getting in the corner. Oh, you see. Oh, big overhand. Works the body, works the body. Uppercut hook, oh, look at that. Beautiful flurry. Almost out on the feet. Ooh. Big shots, Flush big shots. shots. Yeah, that's... Great job by Tua. Wow. Henry Robert Hanna Heavyweights stops did this not fight. disappoint. One minute, 58 seconds of the first round due to abandonment. Your winner in the red corner, Tua Vaa. Wonderful job by Tua. It's a great performance by Tua, but this next fight is the one that I've been looking forward to all week. Anthony Barella versus Gavin Bizla. Yeah, Bizzle. this is going to be a at, well, this is going to be a fight to watch. Really excited for this next fight. Yeah, like I said, we're both looking forward to this competition. Anthony Varela, former uh, Golden Gloves champion, and uh, incredible fighter. I took him up. I cornered him one time in Vancouver, and he went in, and and the guy was actually on Gavin Bisla's dad's card, and the guy was over by 12 pounds. But we were already over there, and we said, "Do we want to take the fight?" And we said, "Okay, we're going to make him pay in the ring." And so we we went in there, and Anthony knocked the guy out in the first round. Now, Anthony's actually fighting against Inder Bisla's son in a rematch, which he lost a three-round decision. So now we're looking forward to this. Um, the great Gavin Bisla from Surrey Mixed Martial Arts in Surrey has done a lot for the community there in Vancouver. Took a lot of kids and, and put them in a the right sport. His son is uh, an undefeated champion and a Comp Sports World Champion. So we're looking forward to seeing his little brother come in here against, uh, yeah. against uh, Anthony and Gavin. I mean, isn't this the fight we're looking forward to? Yeah. Okay, you had Jason Hyde back here on the commentator's booth, coming Great in to, to hang him, out. Here to watch uh, the co-main event. Anthony Varela versus Gavin Bisla. Yeah, this is gonna be an absolute slugfest. I, I still haven't gotten over that last fight. I know, yeah, that one. Tua <laughs> has got some firepower. Yeah, no kidding. I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. he's a fantastic training partner. I see yeah. him in the gym sparring with the guys all the time, and he's a nice training yeah, partner. Yeah, yeah. It, he doesn't do that in the gym to <laughs> his training partners. He doesn't throw down like that. He's got that. It's the Come rugby fight player time. fight. But enough that about has, that. Yeah. We can watch that one on the instant yeah, exactly. replays. Now we got Gavin Bisla. Bisla's got a great team, a great history of boxing. They always produce solid boxers. They do. They, and they're known in Vancouver, man. I, 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 I've seen a lot of their guys compete, and they're always really, really good. Uh, Bisla knows how to train them. They've got, come from a really, a, a hard gym of fighters, a fighter's gym. Yeah. So 
you know, it, it, ex expect him to be well prepared and ready to fight. And it has done so much for the community out there. You know, we've brought in so many athletes that could have been in criminal situations and built a, a nice community there. He's had nice tie-in event, dinner table events where bringing competitors over and, and it's, it's really good to see them. And oh, here we go. We got Anthony Varela, former Golden Gloves champion. Uh, he fought the Canadian amateur national champion and lost a close decision. And a great coach and a good human being. We're looking forward to seeing him compete tonight. Send it up to Don Andrews. From the Roundhouse at Bayview Place here in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, Champ Promotions is proud to bring you our co-main event of the evening. Scheduled three three-minute rounds in our open elite 67 kilogram division sponsored by Maxim Insurance and sanctioned by the BC Athletic Com Combative Sports Association. Inside the ring of the bell, your referee in charge of the action is Derek Hoy. Introducing first to my right, the man fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim, representing Bizla Boxing from Surrey, BC. Please welcome Gavin Bizla. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white stripes, representing Island Boxing here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Anthony the Anvil Varela. I'm really looking forward to this. This is one of the highly anticipated car fights on the card tonight. This is going to be a good one. And in, in a night of good ones. Every fight's been awesome tonight. It's been incredible. Here we go. Anthony putting the pressure on. He's good already doing a better job in the first fight by putting pressure on his opponent. Yeah, you know? he's kept good pressure on Gavin. Good dirty boxing on the inside there. And that's exactly what Anthony needs to do is put the pressure because Gavin Bisley is a good boxer. He knows how to stick and move. Gavin's got, got beautiful feet. He's got to put him against the ropes and unload on him. He can't stay on the outside of this tall man's long punches. 100%. No, and Gavin, Gavin's got beautiful feints, beautiful, beautiful footwork. He's moving well. He's staying on the outside. He's not standing right in front of Anthony. So Anthony's got to keep that pressure that he started with. Uh, he's doing a great job of cutting Gavin off uh, and keeping him on the ropes. Oh, beautiful body shots. That'll be great for slowing Gavin down as the fight goes on. Yeah, Gavin, Gavin's a very, very calm boxer, very yes. technical, smart and, and, and efficient. And uh, this is a, actually a rematch. They, they fought in the uh, BC Provincials not too long ago, and Gavin won a split decision. Very close fight. Anthony is really hungry in this fight. At the time was the defending provincial champion. And uh, he's got a score to settle here. You can tell he is. He is hungry, he is right in there, right on him the entire time. Uh, Speaking with and Anthony earlier, he, he's right, Jason's right, he's, this is the best he's ever felt health-wise, and he's really prepared and motivated for this fight. And Good defense there from Anthony, blocking and moving his head. Oh, nice overhand from, from Gavin. Ooh. Both guys are throwing at the same time a lot. This is the wrong range for Anthony. Nilly. He's his footwork and step back on the inside. His outer range is Gavin's oh, area. Beautiful one too from Gavin. And he's going to back on the ropes again. Oh, beautiful head movement. Good, you got him on the ropes. Yeah, he's got to keep him on there, not back off. Now he's in there. He's got to stay busy with his feints. And keep working that body and come back upstairs with something. Good, he's going to stop with that head, but he's going to make him pay. Gavin's being hard to hit, though. Gavin's not being a still target. He's moving his leg and his feet. He's giving lots of things to think about. Ooh, Ooh beautiful overhand. Beautiful right by the Advil. And that's what he does. Yeah. He throws right hands on people. And hurts. 
Anthony the that was the, the biggest biggest punch of the the fight by far. And that was round what stealing to round. me, guys. Well, that was round stealing round. to me. Yeah, that was a definitely good round. Good round. Contrast to Styles. Yeah. Yes. And they're both fighting to their strengths, which uh, makes it even more exciting. See some replays here on the screen and uh, see what see what we see. Nice tie up from Gavin. Nice one, two, and out, but then Anthony on him, making him pay. Oh, nice inside overhand. Yeah, nice counter over that jab. Nice, staying busy on the inside. That was, an ex that was a really technical round. Both fighters showing their experience. Jason's right though, Anthony, he's got to continue that pressure, use footwork and head movement to get it on the inside, keep it along the ropes, and, and put pressure on him, because you know Gavin's got great footwork and a long reach, and he likes to fight on the outside. Yeah, both fighters' uh, keys to victory are pretty clear. Gavin's got to stay, keep his footwork moving, stay off the ropes, keep touching with the jab, landing his straight shots. Anthony's got to keep fainting and not, not chase, and, 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 and mix up his levels when he gets inside. I like how Anthony isn't headhunting when he's trying to walk him down. He's yes. cutting him off and he's going to the body. Yes. And then he'll go upstairs. I see a lot of guys just you know, head too anxious over. going to go for the head. No, and he's mixing up the, he's going for the head after the body too. He's not just body, 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 head, head, head. It's making it hard for Gavin to hit as well because his head is constantly changing levels. Yeah. And Anthony seems to have a better level change this fight, Jason. He's kind of crouched down lower, so he's not straight head up against Bisla's uh, jab and straight right. Inside, from Anthony. Anthony's still putting the pressure, controlling the ring. He's got to let his hands go when he backs him to the rope, so that's the key to the victory. Oh, nice, nice right hand. Gavin, oh, swing and a miss. Oh. Gets inside, and Anthony gets inside like that, he's gonna make him pay. He's doing a great job of jamming, jamming Gavin's range as he tries to hit him in this round. Gavin's having a real hard time getting anything off because Anthony is is uh, jamming him every time he goes and getting inside and making him pay for every on every exchange. Another super close round in this second fight between these two. Yeah, really, really good. Anthony is another example of a, of a good amateur boxer derailed by the COVID shutdown. He won a bronze medal at the 2019 Canadian um, Olympics, Olympic trials, and just kind of had to sit on the shelf. And now I think this is his third or fourth fight back and, and he's hungry. He wants to get back to where he was. It shows because he he's picking up, you can tell as, as the fight's going on, he's picking up the pace more and more. And he's starting to, really wear on Gavin. And Gavin's digging in too now. He's starting to see him get his second win as well. So this, this third round is really going to be, it's going to, oh, I think both guys are really going to want to want to bring it. Oh, nice body oh, shot. really man. nice little body shot. But Anthony is doubling down here again. Beautiful. Another oh, amazing round. Again. Yeah, really good flurry in the round. Yeah, another guys. great round. Yeah. I was a tiny bit worried about Anthony because uh, I know how much emotion he has in the fights and him with Jason coached three other guys and he came up with all those guys and you can see how emotional he was through his other three fighters fighting. So I'm just glad that he brought his A game to compete tonight because I thought, oh, Anthony, you got the... <laughs> yeah, Here we I'm... go. We got some replays. Oh, look at the speed. You know it. And for, for a tall fighter, Gavin fights well on the inside as well. He knows how to tie up, he knows how to clinch, he knows yeah. how to turn.
So it really is a good style matchup here between these two. But I think, I think Anthony with the pressure that he's putting on is, is, is doing the right thing and what he needs to do. Walk him down, put him on the ropes, hammer him to the body and then go upstairs. Yeah, I think so too. I think he's, uh, he's the, his pressure will be noticed in this third round. I think Gavin's gonna have a bit of a, uh, a, a, a whatever wind he's on right here at the beginning, but then I think it's gonna start to, start to, start to fade and Anthony's gonna pour on for the rest of the round. And they're both trying to win but this, this fight. <laughs> this first 30 se seconds I think is really gonna set the pace. Neither fighter wants to give any ground. And that was oh, the nice. proper instruction by Andrew Bisla to Gavin Bisla, be longer every time. That's the strategy for, for Gavin. Anthony needs to choose his entrance wisely, faint on his way in, yeah. put him where he needs him to be. That's a difficult reach to deal, to deal with. And that's the key thing. You have oh, to faint nice right your way on the inside. Vizla. You can't just walk in. You have to faint your way on the inside. And, and once you get Gavin along the ropes, or the, or the, you have to stay there. Oh. Beautiful. Biz is starting to pick up the pace here now. Beautiful hook. Oh, nice beautiful. Nice Anthony, oh, that's what he needs oh. to do. Big hooks from both fighters. Yes, right hook. Is starting to put pressure forward on Anthony now. What a fight. What a great fight. Gavin gaining confidence. Two of the best. Stepping inside. Neither, like, both fighters staying right in each other's face. Two of the best of the 67 kg uh, weight class in British absolutely, Columbia. Absolutely, 100%. This is a high-level boxing match. What a fight. We don't have a timestamp here, but this is uh, this is anyone's fight still. At this it moment. is. This is anyone's fight. It's round still. Nice left hand by Anthony, though. Yeah, beautiful right hand. Beautiful, beautiful clinch work from, from Gavin as well. Pressure, oh, big pressure from Anthony. Gavin, fighting in, saying he's not afraid. Anthony digging in here, trying what to. What a fight, dude. Holy cow. Everyone wants to win these last seconds. These, both these guys want this fight so bad. You can wow, feel yeah. it, the you electricity. Feel both. They both really want it. How wrong it was, Gavin really, very hungry. What a fight, wow. holy cow. I mean. I can't believe the round's still going. What oh. a fight, unbelievable I believe fight. That was yeah. a great fight, those guys put it all, all on the line for three three minute rounds. Yeah, they really did. I'm glad I'm not a judge tonight. Yeah, I wouldn't want to judge this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's an incredible performance by both athletes. Let's watch, check some of these highlights out. Oh, beautiful one-two body. I like Man. how he, you know, punched with speed on the way in. Didn't didn't yeah. punch with power on his way in. Hit the body and then opened up with the power. Yeah. Because a guy like Gavin will counter you from the outside if you're trying to throw hard shots from him. Yeah, wow, well, absolutely. I, I got Anthony winning a very very close decision here because I thought Anthony turned it up in the end and it was really good to the body and landed a nice left hook when it was very very close. So I mean. This was a great fight. This was a great, great fight. fight. I, I, Whatever the outcome of yeah, this fight, the these two have great futures ahead of them yeah, in this sport. Them. They really do. That was a really, really exciting fight to watch. Send it off to Don Andrews now for the official decision. Fight fans, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. The judges' decision, your winner by split decision. In the red corner, Anthony Varela. Anthony Varela. Anthony Varela. Anthony Varela. Anthony Varela. Anthony Varela. After his cornering tonight and coming out here and 
I talked to him on the phone a couple of times, and he was. this is the best he's ever felt, and I'm really proud of his victory tonight. He was hungry in this fight. There was a fire lit under him. He was he was really frustrated with what happened at the provincials. He didn't get to carry on to the to the national level this year, and uh, it was Gavin Bislett who beat him at the provincials. So he was he was fired up for this fight, and that was a split decision that went Gavin's this, that way. So now it's going going his way, and like I said, he was fired up and he, he knew what he needed to do. I think we need a, a rubber match now, if that's the case. You know, I, I mean. With these boxers fighting every other week, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think I don't think it'd be a problem to have uh, them uh, line. I mean, I'd, I'd watch them fight again. That was a really exciting fight. Anthony looked great. Uh, so did Gavin, and uh, you know, happy to see all of Anthony's hard work pay off and get his hand raised tonight. I think here that's. Here at home. I think we're destined to see that fight again. I mean, how could yeah. you not? You know, let's do it. Round seven coming up. Really. And one of the things about amateur boxing that is different from the pros, this is a sprint. You yes. Know, you can't go in there and take your time and let that no. clock run out and not be active in amateur boxing. It's different. If you've got 10, 12 rounds, that's a, that's a, you know, we're, we're talking about a marathon and a sprint here. They're different really sports. Really are. You need to be going, you, you should, you should be stepping or punching or fainting nonstop. There really shouldn't be more than two or three steps without, without some sort of action. Here we go, main event time, guys. This is the one we've all been waiting for. I was I'm looking so forward, forward to this. To see yeah. Terrace fight again tonight. I mean, what, is that, uh, how many fights has she had, Jason, in the last little while? Five fights in the last six weeks or something? Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can't even keep track. It's been a blur. And then we, we go to London and uh, two and a half weeks to go fight over there next so we're keeping busy but yeah i think she's on six fight this is, yeah probably six fight maybe seven fights in, in about seven weeks and she's really That's developed incredible. you know under jason she had a really nice right hand fierce right hand and and a good chin and and recently seeing her spar she's she's developed a left hook and an uppercut to go with that and and you give and her boyfriend uh, alex tribe has a his little fitness place called tribe strong and She's working hard with him. He's former Canadian amateur kickboxing world association champion. So together, wow, she's, she's had the right people around her to be successful. Yeah, I can't wait. And uh, and, and Safir, her opponent, is uh, from you know really really well well known boxing club, Griffin's Boxing Club. Uh, a couple of their other fighters have fought tonight. Look great. She is no joke, and she would not step up take this fight unless she knew exactly what she was getting herself into. So. Really excited for our a really action-packed main event here at Champ Promotions, and uh, here we go. Safir walking out to the ring. Well, it's time to to get the party finished, I guess. It's great to see all these gyms from from BC showcasing their talent here. Griffiths Boxing, another strong boxing club coming really out of strong. BC, up against Island Boxing. And these are matchups we see a lot. Um, and I'm, st I'm stoked for this for this fight. Um, you know, when you get to fight back to back to back, the nerves all calm yeah. down. Yeah, you guys, you real comfortable with it. And that's like, it, fighting often is one of the most important things you can do as a fighter, especially a young fighter. And it's something that I, I'm jealous that, you know, the amateur boxing still has this ability to run fights so often where you, get to the professional levels it starts just and here we have Terrace Tara Smith just beat the number one girl ranked in Canada three weeks ago she's 20 and 5 uh, fighting at the 57 kg we, limit we see a few different styles come out of Tara sometimes we see her fight sometimes we see her box yeah so we'll <laughs> see what she's gonna do today oh I, that Our main event of the evening. Scheduled three three-minute rounds in our open elite 57 kilogram division, sponsored by Gordon and Gordon, and sanctioned by the BC Combative Sports Association, represented ringside by Robert Hanna. Our three judges for our main event this evening: Robert Hanna, Richard Deshan, and Derek Hoyt. Our doctors ensuring the fighter's safety at ringside. Dr. Prinsloo and Dr. Levy. 
Inside the ring when the bell goes, in charge of the action, your referee rather, is John Kobash. Now fight fans, our three judges are ready. These two fighters are ready. Victoria, are you ready for a main event of the evening? Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim representing Griffin's Boxing in Vancouver, BC. Please welcome Saphir Vendrill. Her opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, representing Island Boxing here in Victoria, BC. Please welcome Terrace Smith. Uh, for a competition, and she's got a booth selling hoodies to help fundraise her, her trip there. So if you get a chance, come back there and help her out with that. Here we go, main event time. Keep your heads up at all times. Watch the holding, watch the low blows, and listen for stop, break, and time. Touch it up and back in your corners, please. I think she could make this fight a lot easier on herself if she uses it. So if she boxes, you're saying. <laughs> oh, you can feel the tension. Oh. Oh, she looks like Terrace that wants to fight tonight. <laughs> Terrace is she coming does. out swinging. She looks like she wants to be a bully. Good head movement coming in from Safir, though. Trying to get in the inside of the longer nice fighter. Nice combo and, and an angle change by Terrace. Ooh, nice right nice. hand. Beautiful like footwork by Terrace. Love the, the lead foot fainting. Light in her toes. Just throwing that right hand stepping back really nice when she measures it with speed. Yeah, she's seen everything. There Ooh, nice combo yeah. there. And Zafir's trying, she's doing the right thing though. She's trying to cut her off. She's trying to get inside. Nothing landing yet. Fighters nice and relaxed. Starting to settle into this, into the fight now, feeling each other's strength and each other's rhythm a bit. Terrace moving really well laterally. She's sensing she Saphir's timing and moving away from it laterally. And that's yeah. very good boxing. Yeah, Saphir's trying to cut her off. She's not trying to chase her, but uh, Terrace is just uh, cutting the angle and moving beautifully. Not there for her. Oh, Ooh, beautiful right hand. Hard, straight right hand. Not beautiful straight right. Oh. Right down I like the pipe. what she's doing. She's hard, fast, measuring it, not wasting any energy, yeah. accurate with it. Taking nice angles. And that's what boxing is. It's not a fight. Being a matador. I mean, it can be a fight. There's a time and place for it. Absolutely. Oh, Ooh, oh beautiful. beautiful combination. Really nice combination. Terrace back to the middle, holding ground. And like Jason said, she's not wasting any energy. She's, no. she's just throwing. Calm. And Long, that's the straight beauty punches. of fighting that many times where you can just calm down and let the nerves go. Exactly. I wish you could fight every week. Watching this doesn't help. <laughs> Yeah, Terrace is, she's getting hit by nothing other than, you know, a couple body shots. Sphere's working hard, though. She's trying to get inside. She's trying to make make her game plan work. She's not quitting on, oh, shit. Nice hook there Sevier at the end. Sphere did that in a right hand. Great yeah. round. Great she, she round of did. boxing. She Good did. back to the corners. The, uh, she's, see what her boyfriend, uh, WSKA, former Canadian Walter Wade champion has to say. I know he puts pressure on Terrace a lot with Jason, and the combination has made her uh, such a better fighter. Here we go, let's have a look. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's that nice right hand stepping yeah, back, beautiful. letting her walk into it. Stuck one of the under. hardest. Oh, look, nice flurry. Yeah. One of the hardest parts in this sport is to back off on the power. It and is. Just throw with speed and accuracy. Every tendency in your body is making you want to swing and try too hard, and that takes a lot of time and, and experience to get there. It sure does. It's one of the, absolutely one of the hardest things is make it just smart decision making, and, and it's every ounce of your body is calling at you to throw those big punches when it's just just touch, just touch. It's also really exciting to see Derek Hoyt across from me in the ring. Uh, had 179 amateur boxing fight, fights, a former coroner, so it's I really like see Sophia's all the head movement. She's coming in. I mean, she's getting tagged and stuff, but she's she's not coming with her head straight up. She's moving her head. She's she's doing the right thing. And she commits to it. And she commits to it. And she's uh, and she is having success with some of the punches. She's just not landing to the head at all. She's she's getting to the body, but then. Uh, Terrace is just out of the way by then. She's she's too sharp. Yeah, that's exactly right. <coughs> and she's just landing those straight punches as she's backing up, which is very difficult to do. And she doesn't back up in straight lines. She'll take, no. she'll take a check hook off of it. She'll angle out so she's got more space. Ooh, and she just does it again, right? Angling out back to the center. Yeah, never getting pinned on the ropes. Off here. Yeah. Some good crowd coaching. Severe punch quicker. She's trying. Don't worry. Oh. All oh, beautiful combination. A nice oh, right nice hand. Nice turn. Yeah. She's ex her clinch game's excellent, and she hasn't yeah, had a chance to use it yet. But term. if you want to tie up with Terrace, get ready for a good clinch game. She's ready for that. Timing was perfect. It just that's an energy drain for for Safir. She moves so well laterally to the right when it's in a severe gain some competition. She's out of there, and she takes your uh, confidence. She's starting away. to flinch a bit. She's starting to get overwhelmed. Oh, oh. Right hand. yeah, which means she's going to throw weight in with more desperate punches as she is. More openings for Terrace's straight punches. Fear is tired, taking his talk. She just took a big breath. Is really putting on the pressure now. Oh. I think we had a slip there. No, but I think that was a slip. Slip. That push. was a slip. Yeah. I give Sophia a lot of credit coming yeah. in here, Terrace's hometown, and doing what she's doing. She yeah. doesn't have as much, much experience as Terrace, but she's committing to the punches when it's time to go. And, and that's what you just have to do. Cut that, per, that taller opponent off and, and commit she's, to it. She's following the game plan. She is. And she's having success uh, with it. It's just, you know, she's, she's it's a tall tall task to take with uh, Terrace. And Terrace is, is just, well, for uh, the most part, yeah. Her clinch game there, too, right? Like yeah, the time tall, on that spin. You get where you want to be. She steps forward and turns you. And or check hooks off on the side. It's difficult to deal with. Here we go, third and final round. <clears throat> Here we go. Sphere's still moving her head well. Tara's still moving up backwards well. well we Harris likes a fight. Yeah, he to fight said that was. Fight. There was a lot of muscle used there. Ooh, Ooh, nice uppercut. Beautiful. 
She's starting to read that those head, those level changes. Yeah, and there's that left hook we're talking about. She set that uppercut beautifully off the hook. Yes, beautiful. See if she goes Lighting back to that feet. pattern. She's taking her time. No rushing. Oh, beautiful frame and angle. Look at that J step back to the middle. Yeah, perfect angle change. Look at that step pivot off the hook. Sphere looking, trying. She's, she's no quitting Sphere. Really impressed with, Ooh, a big right with her effort. That was another right hand landed flush. The referee's doing a good job of keeping the fighters safe wherever we are at the amateur level. But Severe's got a lot of heart. She and does. that's it, that's it. That's a stoppage for Tara Smith. You know, good call for the referee. We know in amateur boxing, they're gonna look out for the safety of the athletes. Severe had more fight in her, we know that. But we're, we're talking amateur boxing here, not pro. Yeah. And the referees and the, you know, the sport is gonna look out for the athletes and save those Save the, the damage for the pro fights. Absolutely, this is about building experience and getting skills so that, you know, when they get paid the big bucks that uh, they can take those risks. But I give, I have to give Sophia credit. I mean, she's up against a tough opponent. You know, Terrace has won a silver medal at the Nationals and she just beat the girl on the national team. And here's Sophia getting in there with her on her sixth fight. So we yeah. have to give her credit for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. A lot of people that would not take this fight. No, and she's going to come back ten times better. The the the, the absolutely the, the, all the skill and experience she gained from this fight is just you, you know nothing's nothing's going to replace that experience. And she's going to be way better. And her next opponent's going to you know be like, oh well, her records she's only had this many fights, but she's going to she's going to seem like she's had a lot more fights when she gets in the ring. Here we go, off to Don Andrews with the decision, or uh, I guess the not decision the. Announcement. Fight fans, referee John Kovacs has seen enough. He calls a stop to this. One minute, 36 seconds of the third round for your winner by ref stoppage. In the red corner, Terry Smith! Fight fans, thank you all for joining us tonight. Without you, these events don't happen. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you for making a ton of noise. Make sure you check out Champ Promotions, social media, Instagram and Facebook. The next show is gonna be posted soon. Please come back and do it again and get home safe. All right, so that's a wrap for tonight's Champ Keith and Jason uh, watching the fights and I uh, can't wait for the next show. And once again, thanks a lot for Champ Promotions. We've, we've had a hard pandemic over the last three years and the city really needed a, a good boxing show to bring everyone back together and, and they brought it back to us tonight in a great venue and a great night of fights and hopefully we're going to do it again here time, sometime soon. Thanks very much for having us. Shaw TV, great job, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. How about so this good. venue? so good to be back here doing this after this long COVID layoff. It's a pleasure to be back here, guys. Really appreciate you guys being able to do this. Really appreciate all the fans out here, the sponsors, and it's fantastic to see the reemergence of this sport. It's been a pleasure, guys. Yeah, awesome. Can't wait for the next one. Thank you. Well, that was fun.